Good afternoon and welcome here to WCBN Sports Live on YouTube. My name is Tim DeGrand. I am joined by my buddy Josh Brown. Josh, how are we doing today? Doing great. Fantastic. Sunday at the Masters and no better way to start that out before the leaders teeing off later this afternoon with some Michigan softball. Michigan going for the series sweep against Iowa after two incredible come from behind wins. Michigan came back from 5-0 and 8-1 deficits in both games of the doubleheader yesterday and now looking for a much more comfortable win in getting the sweep. Well, my job is done. Josh just said it all, but absolutely right. The last day of this weekend series here in Ann Arbor, Michigan at Alumni Field uh, right here in the beautiful campus of the University of Michigan. These two teams bound for the third time in two days at Michigan. Like Josh was saying, two very impressive come from behind victories in each of the last two games, uh, being down 5-1 to one and 8-1 to one, respectively in the first and second games and still managed to find ways to come back from that and I come away with two great Big Ten wins, pushing them to 28 and 14 on the year. This is a Michigan team that's looking to capitalize on this momentum and keep it rolling safe, fishing that sweep out as we are ready for action today. Starting on the mound for the Wolverines today, the right-hander Lauren Durkowski, who also pitched in yesterday's game, uh, the second game, uh, was in there for seven innings, only let up four hits during that time. Yeah, but Drakowski Sorry, actually. seven hits, four runs in her seventh inning of play. Yeah. Got oh. roughed up in the first game, too. First pitch, first pitch goes in, fouled off back behind the backstop. Uh, that is Riley Moss leading off for the Hawkeyes, the right fielder, batting 379 on the year. Highest average on team, perfect for that leadoff spot as the count is 0 1. Wind up pitch coming in. That one again fouled back behind. 0 2 already. Kukowski was not necessarily on her, on her game, and especially in game one off the bat. Gave up four earned runs in the first game, actually, before recording it out. Did have a much better, you know, seven innings, two earned runs in the second game. And the high win. And the 0-2 pitch in. And that's going to be a ball. Just missed that one. Really wanted that. Count goes to 1-2. Durkowski still ahead of it here. Riley Moss trying to look to get a good start for these Hawkeyes. Wind up in, and another ball high that time. Count goes even at 2-2. And a great job from Moss being disciplined, not chasing those high and outside, waiting for her pitch. And a 2-2 comes, fired in, and again, fouled off back. Got to stay alive to fight another pitch. Moss has the most at bats on the team at 103 and is second on the team in on base percentage in this Hawkeyes lineup here. No home runs in the year, but a 398 slugging percentage to go along with it as well. The 2 2 pitch, and that's put into play to shortstop field and an easy out there. Fueled by the shortstop, McVeigh, and a quick and easy put out for the first out of today's game. Yeah, no, a very clean. You know, okay contact there by Riley Moss for right to Ella McVeigh. Flips it to first to Kiki Thole. And up at the plate now for the Hawkeyes with one out. Number 24, the second baseman, Jenny Young, the true freshman, getting some playing time this year. Yeah, Young leads the Hawkeyes in batting average at 370 with a 540 slugging percentage. And has three home runs on the season. The only Hawkeyes player in the lineup with home runs, actually. So that goes in for a strike. Young watches that one in, goes to a 1 1 count. Kasi looking to settle in after getting unsettled right away in game one before getting pulled. Fouled back behind. Iowa seems to be a little bit behind Durkowski today. A lot of those, a lot of contact happening, falling up behind the batter's box. You should see that just missing a little bit low, getting a little bit too early on those pitches. Not making a bunch of clean contact yet. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of fouls off, not too many swings and misses. Durkowski looking to get one here. And hit hard to third base, fielded well. Pitch, throw, and out at first. Third baseman Erickson. The easy put away there, hit that one right to her. But made the easy play when it counted. And that's a two outs already for Drakowski. Again, like we've been mentioning, kind of rocky start in the first game of the two header yesterday, but now 
locking in and doing some great work here. First pitch to the next batter is a strike, and this is Tory Bennett, the shortstop, coming in here. A little bit of a lower average at 247, but 18 uh, hits on the year, two double six RBIs. Trying to make a little bit of something happen. This two out rally going. Sees another strike go in. 0 2 count, two pitches in. Can't take another strike here. The three hitter for the Hawkeyes, sophomore. But yeah, Michigan, two, you know, clean fielding plays to start. Had some errors in their games yesterday, so clean that up. You know, it's going to be super important. So that pitch is just a little low for a ball. Ball As one. Here, the grandstands here in the Lumet Field wanted that one. Bust a little bit low, a little bit outside. So he winds up and the pitch in the 0-2. And check the swing. Said they didn't go. Yeah, I think... We had a pretty good vantage point from here. I think Bennett, you know, just held up. Seemed like the right call. Home plate umpire, Whitney Fulvin, checked with Mike Hernandez at first base. Did not. She did not go there. And the 2-2 pitch fouled back again off the net. Going to stay at 2-2. Ben's going to stay alive a little bit more. The 247 average, one of the little lower ones on the team. Corey Bennett is her 25th start on the season. Hasn't quite made shortstop her home yet, but has started to really gain control of that. Barely got a piece of that one. As 2 2 pitch again tipped back. Bennett making Drakowski work for it. Drakowski on the year, 12 wins, 7 losses, ERA of 223. Has been great for the Wolverines here in her third year. And a 2 2 pitch goes in, and that's hit hard to shortstop. But a great field there by McVeigh. Puts him out. Three up, three down. And a great defensive start for this Wolverine team that struggled with some errors yesterday. Getting a great start to things today. Yeah, one, two, three inning. That's all you can ask for. Great way for Dukowski to settle in, which she was unable to do yesterday in that first game. Had a great outing. The second game kept Michigan. With a fighting chance, and they, they woke up their bats just in time. But I think it's going to be, you know, Michigan trying to set the tone, get out to an early lead. That's something that they weren't able to do in, you know, both games yesterday. See if they can crack the scoreboard first, put pressure on Iowa to come from behind. So Michigan's kind of, you know, with a little bit of a different different view and not having to come from behind, which they've clearly been comfortable coming from behind, but you'd always like to be front running. Always better to control from front instead of trying to fight from behind. Uh, but we're going to see how easy that's going to be for the Wolverines because on the mound for the Hawkeyes, uh, number 25, Devin Greer, who pitched five innings yesterday and through the five innings yesterday only allowed the one run, really handicapped the Wolverines early in yesterday's game and looking to do the same here today. Yeah, leading off for Michigan will be Ellie Sealer, Jr. with a 3-6. 369 batting average. He's coming in with a 541 slugging percentage, which is not pretty solid. Drawing a lot of walks. And we are ready to go here in the bottom of the first. Still 0 0. A quick 3 up, 3 down for the Hawkeyes in the top half. Means that's Michigan's opportunity for the first time this series gets some points on the board first. And the first pitch comes in, strike right down the heart of the plate. Yeah, nice, nice pitch. Devin Greer there. Sealer seemed content to just take the first, first pitch of the at-bat as a strike as the 0-1 comes in. And that is also a strike, so Sealer already down 0-2, taking both strikes. Now on the verge of Early strikeout here. Ellie Seeler doing it a little bit of it all from the uh, batter's box with the highest average on team, but also four home ones, five doubles, uh, slugging of 541. As she sees that one go low for a ball one. One, two count now. Yeah, that one was a little low and outside. Didn't catch any part of the strike zone, so a good take there by Seeler. It's now one and two. The one, two. Fired in. It's a little bit low. 
2-2, Sealer staying alive. Yet to swing at a pitch in this at bat. Counts now even. Pitch in low and away. Sealer thought about it, but pulled back. Full count now, our first full count of the day. Yeah, big payoff pitch here. See if Sealer can find her way on base, get an early base runner for the Wolverines. And a great way of fighting back from the 0-2. Two full and pops that one. Foul. Sealer got a little bit too far out in front of that and pulled that down the right field line. And just foul. But a yeah, great job by Sealer. Took the early 0-2 count. Managed to fight back and stay off. Get the count too full. And we yeah. get that count too full. We're going to force Greer to throw over the heart of the plate. To try to throw out strike. Don't want to get things started off the walk here. Absolutely, and you know when you, when you don't swing at two pitches, yeah. pitch in, hit hard to right center. And that's going to be a base hit. Sealer's going to go two. Throw is in, and Sealer slides in easy, and Sealer leads the game off with a great double. A great job there, fighting back from that 0-2 count, following one off. I made great contact right into outfield, getting that ball all the way out to the wall. Yeah, nice solid contact out to right center and. Center fielder Grace Baines kind of came over that, came over to there and tried to get second base, but it was not in time. Sealer with a leadoff double, excellent at bat. Worked it to full count, got the pitch he wanted, a leadoff double for the Wolverines. And up now, Indiana Langford, second baseman, number 44. First pitch there, went for the bunt, but missed it. Looks like they're trying to do a uh, little bit of a squeeze as Sealer took off and she was going for third, but. Saw the miss button pull back, so it's an 0-1 count. Second pitch, and that was on the button gets off. Sealer's gonna get over to third, but Lankford's gonna be thrown up first. A great sacrifice bunt there from the sophomore, pushing Sealer over to third in great scoring position. One down. Yeah, got the sacrifice they wanted. Avery Jackson, third baseman for the Hawkeyes, ran up, bump was laid down. She flipped it over to first base to Sammy Diaz to get out number one, but Michigan, you know, any kind of contact away really from a good chance of scoring this opening run here. And up to bat now, trying to get that run in. Maddie Erickson, number seven, the third baseman. 368 on the year, one of the best averages, second on the team in homers with eight, 11 doubles, slugging of 625. And fouls this one off, pulls it down the left field line. That one goes foul. So we're gonna go to a 1-1 count after that foul ball. Seeing if all Eric needs here is a deep fly ball in the outfield. Yeah, Erickson was, can tag up. Erickson was four for four in game one of the doubleheader yesterday, trying to continue to build off that. And a, a great ground ball, ball. Gets into the gap. A base hit there by Maddie Erickson. Just gets past the shortstop there, Tori Bennett, under her glove, and reaches first, scores the run, so an RBI single for the Wolverines. Great job there, taking that 1-1 pitch, hitting it hard right between short and third base. Bennett made a dive at it, but just missed it, and it was able to get its way into the outfield, and Sealer standing up, walking in. And the Hawkeyes are gonna have a quick chat already. See if any changes are made for Iowa's little meet mound visit, tire infield in. Coach Gillespie coming out. A little bit of a rockier start for the Hawkeyes, but nothing out of the ordinary that would uh, warrant a change in any sense. Looking like just. Yeah, no pitching change. It's still very early in the game, and but. You know, uh, Dev Devin Greer definitely needs to settle down here. A two and four record on the year. Seven starts and eight total appearances, 34 innings pitched. Coach Gillespie, her sixth year with this team, hired back in June 2018, has been with this program for five years now. Try to get the team settled in as Kiki, Col Kiki Thole comes into the batter's box now. Kiki Thole, the cleanup batter, the first baseman, wearing number two. The power bat on this team. She leads the team with 11 home runs on the year. Second 
on the or third on the team in slugging percentage as well. She's the power bat of this Wolverines lineup, and that's why they have her at the four spot. Picks that one for a ball there. Count goes to 1-1. One, one. As Greer looking to get a handle on the situation now. Another ball there outside. One out, one on, one run scored with Thole in the batter's box. Hawkeyes ideally trying to force a double play here, trying to keep that ball on the ground. Try to turn to and get out of this. Another ball outside there. Count goes to 3-1. A great hitter's count for Thole here. Yeah, prime opportunity here for the Wolverines to get first and second with one out. Wolverines has done a very good job. Lee Valamont day. on deck. And that one does catch the corner of the strike zone. Strike two, bring the count to full. Wolverines have been very disciplined in the plate today, not chasing too many pitches outside. Yeah, forcing forcing the Hawkeyes to throw strikes there. Golden probably have the green light there. And here now comes the pitch, full, and that one's hit up and fouled back into the stands. The fan could not complete the catch. Hate to see it. Yeah. But with that, full fights another pitch. But it's clear Michigan's strategy early is make rear throw strikes and wait for the pitches that they want. Pitch in, and that's low, and Cole draws the walk. Great job there being disciplined and keeping that bat on her shoulder when she needed to. And with that, she is going to get to first. It's going to push Erickson to second. Runners on first and second with one out. And Lily Valamont, the catcher, comes up to the box now. The true freshman out of Trenton, Michigan, is going to follow that Foul first that, pitch off. Yeah. Pitch was high and inside. Sort of kind of went off her wrist, yeah. but she definitely made a swinging motion there. Yeah. So that'll be an 0-1 count. Went to pull back, but that pitch was so high and upside, even as she was pulling back, yeah, sort flipped of just, off of it. Yeah. And the 0-1 coming in, and that one hit straight up in the air. And a great catch. Diaz comes up under it, and that's going to be the second out for the Hawkeyes. Two down, one to go. Yeah, and that's just what the doctor ordered for Iowa. Nothing. Little easy pop out in the infield. No runners advancing. And now Iowa one out away from getting out of sitting just down 1 0. First and second with one out. If you're Michigan, you're certainly hoping to get at least one run in there. Michigan now on the verge of not getting any more of these runs in. Iowa sort of escaping this first inning. Janisa Conway now up to bat for the Hawkeyes, the center fielder for Michigan, freshman. That pitch there calls for a strike, count 1-1. One, one. A lot of freshmen in this lineup for the Wolverines. Lily Valamont, Janice Conway, Ella Stephenson, and Ava Castales, all freshmen in this starting lineup. All have played a lot of uh, games this year, gotten a lot of playing time. And, that, and that's exactly what you want. You want that mix of some of the veterans, you know, towards the top of the lineup. But Michigan with so many underclassmen throughout their lineup that this team is – going to only continue to get better in the years to come. 2-1 pitch there. Hit good to left field. But uh, Klosterman comes up right under it. Great contact there from the freshman. But hit that one right at Klosterman, who's able to make the easy catch in left field. Michigan strands two, but gets one run across there. Yeah. With that great hit from Kiki Thole. Yeah, the Wolverines did not finish that. Yeah, we're not empty-handed in that inning, but definitely two runners left on base. Some opportunities were still out there that were not capitalized on. Excuse me, that was a Erickson who had that uh, RBI single that pushed it to 1-0. And with that first inning is done, one nothing Wolverines. An unusual for Michigan, uh, unusual position for this Michigan team against Iowa, being up before the fifth inning. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, getting an early lead. And now the key is, can Michigan maintain it or will Iowa be able to fight back? It's still one run, absolutely anyone's game. And now it's really going to 
you know. And we will move into the second inning. Coming up to bat for the Hawkeyes. After going three up and three down in the first inning, they will start off with the cleanup hitter, Sammy Diaz. Going on to Devin Greer getting their first at bat today. And then Grace Baines, the center fielder. That will be your first three of Hawkeyes up to start the second. Yeah, four, five, six for Iowa in, their, in the lineup. Some more opportunities here to continue to find a way on continue for Dierkowski to continue to settle in here, turn away some batters. Sam Diaz steps in the box. First pitch on its way, and that one skips on the plate. Ball low. Drakorski kind of missed low with that one. Yeah, a little bit of a wild pitch there by Drakowski, but no runners on base, so all it is, the result's the same, and it's ball one. Sam Diaz, a senior. Coming back to the team, started as a 0-1 pitch. Comes in, that's grounded weakly to first. Picked up by Langford, able to flip it to Thole. So initially took off into hole to try to field that one, but saw Lankford coming over, went back to first, and was able to get there just in time. Yeah, that actually could have a little bit of crisis avoided there as Thor was kind of coming up to try to field that ball, but there was no one ready to be there on first base, so Lankford also ran in, got it, and flipped it to Thor first to get out number one. And with that, that, communication. That brings to the pitcher, Devin Greer, who swings through the first pitch. Greer, Greer solid behind the, solid in the batter's box, batting 296 on the season. The Hawkeyes third best batting average in their lineup today. And swings yeah. through that second pitch, bring the 0-2 count coming up. Greer, one of the better pitchers on this uh, Iowa team, a 165 ERA on the season. As the 0-2 pitch comes in, hits that one high, right in between the outfield and the infield. And that's going to be Conway coming all the way up to field that one. Sometimes that's a little that that's that dangerous territory where it's right it's on the no lip man's land of the there. Absolutely. Outfield. And you yeah, had no. you had McVeigh backing up for it, but heard Conway calling her off. Conway was able to come up, clean catch, and just like last inning, two batters, two outs. Yeah, that communication there was critical. Worked out there for the Wolverines is now batting is Grace Baines. Grace Baines watched that first strike go through. Baines, another senior on this Iowa team. Iowa much older, more experienced, some would say, than this Wolverine team. Grace Baines, all 23 games so far, starting play. A hard ground ball of third base, but an easy 5-3 out there. Excellent play by Maddie Erickson. One hop right into her, her chest, fields it. Tosses it to Kiki Thaw at first, and that's three up, three down once again. No hits so far in this game for the Hawkeyes. Much kind of different feel to this game than yesterday's, you know, kind of the craziness of yesterday's settling in and kind of that chess match of softball. And Dorowski actually able to get through the top of the second with only six pitches. Um, yeah, rapid. An 0-1 in. ground out, an 0-2 pop out, and then an 0-1 ground out. Great use of efficiency there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My week's apologies. Seven pitches. How silly of me. Yeah. Nonetheless, though, very quick half inning there. Michigan will be in the first inning. Pitch count started to rack up a little bit for Dukowski, but nothing, nothing crazy. Now, you know, six up, six down. That's all you can ask for. And a mix of you know a lot a lot of a lot of good fielding play, good communication all by Michigan. No no strikeouts, I believe, yet for no Hawkeyes all yeah, it's all been ground outs or fly outs. So that communication, you know, you know, defensively for Michigan is really been key. No early errors through two frames. Thank you all for tuning in here on WCBN Sports here on YouTube. My name is Tim DeGrand, joined by Josh Brown. Uh, calling today's action between the Michigan Wolverines and Iowa Hawkeyes. So far, 0 one, uh, one nothing Michigan leading over the Hawkeyes. Um, Hawkeyes have so far been six up, six down. 
at the moment. Uh, Wolverines are have that one run thanks to a Maddie Erickson RBI single. Uh, Sealer double start things off, was sacrificed, bunted over third from uh, India Langford, and Erickson brought her home. Wolverines stranded two on base at the end of the first, looking to expand upon the lead they've got here in the second, considering how much they've had to come from behind in yesterday's doubleheader, both times having to come back from a four-plus run deficit, hoping to this time get ahead of the game a little bit to force Iowa to play some catch-up. And we are beginning the bottom of the second. Now up to bat. Seven hitter Ella Stevenson. And 241 of the year. Another one of those freshmen for the Wolverines. First pitch comes in strike. Ella sees that one go. The Wolverines have done a very good job today of being disciplined at the plate. They've been watching a lot of balls go by. They've been forcing a lot of full counts. 2-1 two counts, 2-2 two two counts. Yeah, I've really been impressed with Michigan's approach so far as that pitch is high for ball number one. Count now even at one and one. But yeah, I, I think very disciplined, waiting for the strikes, forcing Greer to throw strikes in the pitches that they want, pitches that these Michigan hitters want to see. The one one comes to Stephenson. That one's a little bit low, a little bit outside. Two one, Stephenson gets back ahead in the count. Stephenson, the right-hander on the year, 241 average, 295 on base. 634 OPS and a great off speed there from Greer falling in for strike two even the count up at 2-2 two -two. yeah I think Stevens in there just got a little bit a little bit caught in quicksand there really nice off speed there to get the count to two and two 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 pitch comes in inside there Stevens got to step back a little bit sure not to get hit and now Another full count here, the freshman from Algonac, Michigan. Looking to make something happen. At 5'9", one of the taller girls on the team and hits that one high and deep to center field. But it's gonna be an out. Baines comes up underneath it on the warning track. A great contact there from Stevenson. Looked like for a second it might have had a chance but it comes up harmlessly in the gloves of Baines on the warning track there. First out of the inning, and that brings up number 24, Ava Castales, the fourth freshman in a row in this Wolverine lineup, batting 304 on the year. One of four Wolverines batting over 300 this far in the season. It's her, 17, her 18th start on the year as the first pitch comes in for a ball low. Casales in her 24 games played, in her 20, this being game 25, um, 46 at bats, 14 hits, four home runs. Yeah, and she actually had two two home runs in the first game, big game in game one. Follows that one off. Got a little, a little bit behind it. Hit that out of bounds just outside the right field line. Now, one, one No runners on here. Make a little something happen. They're gonna kind of carry some of her heroics over. She had the go-ahead home run actually in that first game. Michigan's winning game one, and now trying to hope to do more of that here with the two-one count. Greer takes the pitch. Winds up in, swung on, tipped back, followed off back behind into the net. 2-2 two -two count now coming up. You know, 2-2 two -two count for Gastalis, the designated player on this Michigan softball team. Just 46 at-bats on the season. Chance Pitch to continue to stay in the here. Hits that one straight up into the sky. Foul territory, and Diaz comes under it for the put out. Just missed a little bit too, missed a little bit too much on that one. Yeah, just got under it there and popped it up. Easy play in foul territory there for Sammy Diaz. And now bring up the nine hitter for this Wolverine team, number 32, Ella McVeigh. And despite being the nine hitter, that's 310, which is the third highest average on the team. 
Slugging of 333. On base percentage of 370. Does a pretty good job despite the uh, traditionally or stereotypically weak nine spot. Takes the first pitch for a ball there, 0 1 count. Greer winds up, sends one in. That's going to be another ball there, again low. 0 2 count. Yeah, the 2 0 count, hitters count now for Ella McVeigh. Not someone to necessarily draw a lot of walks, only six walks drawn on the year. She's sort of showing butt now. It's the count's now 3 0. That pitch high, so prime opportunity here for L. McVeigh to draw her seventh walk on the season, get on base early here. Had Michigan. two hits in a game, and one of the games yesterday against Iowa, her best on the year. I'm gonna kind of keep some of that momentum going. Shows bunt again, takes that strike, three one now. Yeah, now definitely no point in kind of that green light there, especially if you're trying to show bunt. But trying to apply a little bit of pressure, see if you can drop off four, but that pitch is definitely right in the zone, and now it's 3-1. We're trying to get out of this at bat, and that pitch low. Draws the walk and gets on base with two outs. Wolverines have a runners on, and the top of the order coming back to the box. Leadoff hitter, Ellie Sealer. Had a double. Her first time up, kind of got everything started. Has the one run scored so far. Yeah, that nice lead up double on that. You know, working that, that first at bat from an 0-2 count and got the pitch you want on full count. That and that dropped. one dropped. And McVay's going to go and steals on the pass ball there. Yeah, drop, that, that pitch is dropped by Hannah Lindsay and easy pickings there for Ella McVay to steal second base and now a base hit would likely score Ella McVeigh totally changes the complexion and stakes of this at bat here why not pitch the 0-1 hit right to second base and that is going to be the end of the inning kind of awkward there she hit a soft line to second base didn't know if it was and caught yeah, immediately or Young absolutely caught that ball but still was kind of like Look at the ump. Yeah, I think like, I think it might have dropped a little bit, but just to be safe, you know, get the out at at first. And that'll be that. And that's the end of the second inning. Michigan leading 1-0, but has missed some opportunities. Left two runners on second base, left three total runners on base, and two in scoring position. So two of those left second base, left first and second in the first inning, and now the runner on second there to in the inning. So Michigan definitely has missed some chances and opportunities to further extend this lead. Definitely has missed, but so far this Wolverine team looking a lot more in control than they have looked in the uh, two previous games. Part of the reason why I was able to get such a massive leads uh, in each of the double headers yesterday uh, was mistakes being made by Michigan, was swinging at pitchers out of the zone, was making some simple fielding errors that allowed innings to keep going on and on just let Iowa rack up the run. But so far today has been very good not doing that. Uh, Zerkowski has been excellent on the mound. Uh, the batters have all been very disciplined. Not swinging stuff uh, too far outside. Getting a lot of full counts. Uh, and even though they aren't necessarily, you know, only one run, two hits so far, even though it doesn't necessarily look like a lot of dominance, by keeping getting these high counts against Greer, you're forcing Greer's pitch count up and up and up, which means she might end up getting pulled out earlier than Iowa initially wanted to. Whereas Dorowski's been able to keep her pitch count, especially at second inning, kept that pitch count very low as we start again here. Yeah, I mean, pitch count isn't as big of a factor at softball. Dorowski pitched in both games yesterday, now pitching in today, just because the underhand nature of softball. Pitch count isn't as big of a factor, but of course you want to keep it low as possible and really Absolutely. just kind of speaks the ability to just get outs quick. As Klosterman leads off for the Hawkeyes here in the top of the third inning. That pitch there is fouled off way high and behind the backstop going into the stands. It's like a lucky fan. Gives the ball back today. <laughs> uh, but a 1-1 one -one count now. Yeah, Klosterman with a 222 batting average with a 358 on base percentage. Has drawn 12 walks on the season. 
So it definitely does have a little bit of a knack to just Drakowski find her way on up. base. Fires. And that's a strike. Finding its way inside. A 1 2 count now. Drakowski in control again. And Klosterman trying to make a little something happen here. Uh, bats 4.2 when they lead off an inning. See if they can get some of that magic going here. That's a ball again, misses outside. 2-2 two -two count now. Here comes Zerkowski, 2-2 two -two count. In, and that's just inside. Yeah, Brings the count to full. Yeah, Zerkowski really wanted that, but couldn't quite get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Klosterman kind of had to get a little bit out of the way there. Now, full count, just done a good job working to full count, but this is an important payoff pitch. See if the Hawkeyes can snag their first base runner of the game. And the pitch grounds to second base and an easy put out there. Great job from Langford sliding over. And another easy play. This has been not only great pitching uh, from Drakowski, but a lot of great uh, keeping that ball on the infield to give these easy plays for Michigan to make on the infield. Langford's had a couple, Erickson's had a couple, uh, and Thol, uh, Thol has been absolutely perfect at first base so far. And first pitch there for the next batter goes outside. That is Hannah Lindsay, the catcher, who is still relatively new to this position. Uh, only started nine games at catcher for the Hawkeyes so far this year. Uh, and those 19 at bats only has the two hits. Yeah, 105 bat average is not the number you you want to see, but again, a small sample size, so any hit would drastically bring that average up. Chance for to here. 2-0 count now after that second pitch goes for ball as well. Third pitch here, high, and a 3-0 count. Drakowski trying to get Lindsay to chase. Trying to get her swing at something. But very this one so far from Lindsay. The 3-0 pitch here. Got put in the strike zone. And does so. Gets that one. Yeah, no point there. You just got to fire something in the zone. Lindsay's not looking to make con hit, make contact there. Definitely not a green light there on 3-0. Maybe there will be 3-1, but again, I think this is one you just got to find a way to fire it in the strike zone here. He's trying to get on base. Drowski. He takes that there. Does just that, keeps that one right in the zone, daring Lindsay to try to hit it. But Lindsay has not swung at a pitch yet, and that brings the count to full. I mean, with so someone with such a little bit on the lower side batting average here. Full count, and that one hit wave foul, pulled that one almost perfectly behind her, back onto the train tracks behind Alumni Stadium. But lives to fight another day. One out here in the top of the third, full count now. Hannah Lindsay, the catcher, up to bat. Drakowski's been doing great so far and fires the 3 2 pitch in there. And that one is hit again high, but again foul. Lindsay's getting way ahead of these pitches. But has made solid contact, just about 45 degrees in the wrong direction. As for the third time, Drakowski is going to deliver that 3 2 pitch. The payoff pitch here. And got Off her. speed. Wow. What a pitch. Stunned Anna Lindsay there. A great pitch there from Drakowski. Dropping just into the top of the strike. So you saw Lindsay start to load up and swing at it, but pulled back right as she that just pitch got stunned dropped there. down. That was the first strikeout for either team today. Struck him out looking. And that brings up the nine hitter. Good old fashioned backwards K here. Avery Jackson now, the nine hitter coming up to the plate. It, dirty the righty out of Ken, Kankakee, Illinois. Three hits and just 33 at bats here. So Durkowski, prime opportunity here to go nine up, nine down. And that one, a hesitant swing there from Jackson, follows that one up. Tips it back into the net behind the batter, uh, behind the plate. It's going to push the count to 1-1. One, one. Yeah, Lindsay ma really made Drakowski work on that last at bat. But the 1-1 one, one pitch here comes. Jackson showed bunt, but again, tipped that one back behind the plate again. 1-2 yeah, now, one, one, now. Yeah, one strike away now from 
finishing off this inning and getting through the Hawkeye, retiring all nine Hawkeyes in this lineup. Be very impressive. A strong way to start the game off potentially for Lauren Durkowski and this Michigan team. Will now to look to kind of add on that lead. If that one goes high and outside. 2-2 two -two count now. Gundrakowski probably trying to get Jackson chasing a little bit. Sets back on the mound. Reads a sign. 2-2 two -two pitch. Two outs. Pitch in. And great contact there from Jackson. And that one is going to be caught. Great play there from Stevenson. Who ran up under it. Lost her sunglasses in the process. Makes the play, though. N nice nice fielding play by Al Stevenson. It was great contact, too, by uh, Avery Jackson there. Yeah, putting the, the ball in the gap. Stevenson had to come sprinting across. Bench come up under it. And that is, as you are saying, nine up, nine down. Drakowski seen the whole Hawkeye lineup once and has put them all down. And that will, again, three scores innings for the Hawkeyes. That's going to push us into the bottom of the third. We got a little potato sack race going on between some uh, some kids out in, in right field. Always love to see it happen. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. One of them got out to a big lead. The one younger the sister absolutely destroying the older one. Wow, that wasn't even close. Using the power of the Michigan shirt adorned upon her. The spirit of the Wolverines propelled her to a dominant finish in the right field potato sack race as we have here uh, Kids Day in Ann Arbor. A great Sunday afternoon to bring the family to the ballpark. Yeah, it's dollar day, dollar general admission tickets, so it's pretty, pretty packed out here. Got baseball starting at Ray Fisher Stadium in 20 minutes. So a lot going on here. Great. Beautiful, beautiful day. You can't ask for better oh weather. Oh my god, yeah, especially the last few days, like three days raining nonstop. Weird rain, and now it's, it's whip and win, but it's you know, it's nice weather, 70, 70 degrees, and that's all you can ask for. Is Josh made a mistake wearing his jeans today, sweating his behind off here in the yeah, booth. Yeah, it's it's. Rookie mistake we got the we got the kid. shade up here in the in the press box. Bottom nice. third starts strong hit there from Langford, but a great backhand snag there from Young puts that one away. Yeah, no. Got a little bit too we were talking about with the weather, but yeah, first no. First up, uh, Indiana Langford uh, came up. First pitch she saw it made great contact on it, but great play there from. The second baseman, Jenny Young. Yeah, backhand stop the bag, there, yeah. Moving towards bag, backhand flipped it across, good. And now up comes Maddie Erickson, who had the RBI single back in the first. Again, swings the first pitch and hits it hard, foul down the right, uh, down the left field line. Pulls just a little bit too much, got out ahead of that one. Hope we make something else here, trying to prevent Greer from getting in a little bit of a groove. Erickson's going to step up, load it, pitch in from Greer. The 0-1, high, and Erickson lays off of that one. You yeah, now an even count at 1-1. One one. Nice, good eye there from Erickson. Pitch was definitely trending high. And the 1-1. One -one. And hit great straight to third baseman. Great feeling job there. And another put away. A yeah, nice backhanded stop there from Avery Jackson. Build that one approach over the bag. Yeah. Down it's clear Erickson is a is a pull hitter. Yeah. Her first first at bat had a RBI single that got through on the on the left side. Foul ball there. You know, on the left side, and now, you know, ground grounded a third that was stopped there by Avery Jackson and an easy throw to Sammy Diaz. And just number two. And just like that, two outs as Kiki Thole comes up into the Bears box, sees that first pitch go high. Definitely the biggest body on this team, standing at 5'10". Tallest girl on the field today. And that translates to some incredible power as we've seen throughout the course of the year. Again, leading the team with 11 homers. The 0-1 pitch comes in and again goes high. Gets a very hitter-friendly 2-0 count now. And Greer going to have to fight from behind against one of Michigan's most dangerous hitters. It's the senior from Tinley Park, Illinois. Sees the third ball go through there. A lot of Illinois people today. Yeah. Illinois, big softball say apparently. 
Yes. Yeah. No. No. no for sure. Uh, Chicago suburbs and oh, that yeah. entire area. A uh, little bit of a breeding ground for talent. Northwestern, Michigan just got swept by them uh, oh, last yeah. weekend. Um, that was three that one pitch, in three old pitch there. Erickson sees that strike in, so three one count now. But yeah, like you mentioned, yeah. Yeah, um, Northwestern's a class of the the Big Ten softball. Softball wise, Michigan got swept at them last weekend. It is responsible for all three of. Michigan's Big Ten losses. That Pitch, goes for a ball. A ball will be walking away now. Erickson, great eye there, and goes to first base. Yeah, and the Wolverines now with this game, throw on first base. Or um, yeah, Thole, yeah, yeah oh, throw on first base. Yes. Yeah, uh, Kiki Thole, excuse me. Uh, yeah, throw on first base, and now you know Michigan going to try to get their third sweep of Big Ten play and avoid any losses to any team other than Northwestern. Got the midweek win against Michigan State in East Lansing. Sweeps against uh, Purdue and Indiana. Now, quick time has been called on the field. Greer deliberating with the left side of her infield. And this is exactly what happened in the second inning too. Uh, Michigan first two up, uh, went down two outs. Led with a walk. Now we'll see if this time they can turn that into some runs. Full taking a hard secondary lead there, but that first pitch does go for a ball. This is Lily Valamont, the first of the four freshman stretch we have in this lineup. The catcher, doing a good job behind the plate so far today and so far this year. Has started every game behind the dish for the Wolverines. As a true freshman is a remarkable task. 1-1 one, one now. Swing and a miss there. Swings through that one. 1-2 one, now. Behind the count. Trying to stay alive as the Hawkeyes hope to escape this inning without any more damage being done. Try to keep this one run game. Pitch there goes, and that is a strikeout looking. Greer's first on the day. Blew that one right by Lily Valamont. And yeah, that was a solid the third pitch there. Be the top of the Iowa order coming up next. To start off the fourth, it will be Moss, Young, and Bennett, the top of the lineup. Yeah, after the fireworks of yesterday in both games, the tone has definitely come down. A little bit more of that, that situational softball is going to be very critical. Instead of the, the power and the crazy comebacks and, you know, both teams settling in. And it's becoming a pitcher's duel. Michigan looked like they. Michigan has had the the opportunities at the plate. Devin Greer has been solid in the in the pitcher's circle, and Michigan has struggled to get more than one run. That that one runs good for now, but you never want to be. You want to extend that lead, of course, naturally as much as possible. Um, so absolutely, you know, you know, put as less pressure on Lord Nurkowski as possible to throw. Uh, a shutout. Well, as we're here um, at the end of the third inning, a uh, little recap as we're about halfway through the game here now. Still 1-0. Uh, Wolverines having the lead over the Hawkeyes. That one run came in the bottom of the first inning when Ellie Singler started off with a double. Uh, Indiana Langford sack bunted her over to third, and then Maddie Erickson singled to left, which brought in Siegel, uh, Sealer, and that was the only run so far scored. Uh, while Michigan has left a few runners on base, uh, two in the first, one in the second, and one in the third, they've not been able to get any more than just one. And Iowa so far has not had a single hit or runner reach base. It's been nine up and nine down as we begin the fourth with Riley Moss coming back up to the plate and sees that first strike go through as Lauren Durkowski, the right-handed junior, has been on form today and has kept Iowa from getting anything done, forcing a lot of ground outs, a couple fly outs, a second pitch come here is a grounder to shortstop, but an awkward hop. And I believe we call that the broadcaster's curse. As the first base runner is now aboard for the Hawkeyes. It's just some awkward hops. Don't know what they what the scoring ruling on that will be. You know, kind of you could, could argue that's an error. error. Could be an infield single. Did touch the glove of Ella McVeigh. Well, that's been solved, but did take a weird hop right before it was. Ra it was a Jared Moss kind of kind of took like a. Uh, running chop at it hit it hard two hard bounces yeah and they're gonna roll that out a single bunt there Alice gonna 
going to get the out at first, but it's going to push Riley Moss to second. That was Jenna Young, who first pitch bunted over. Yeah, it was a nice nice fielding play there by Indiana Langford at first, who had to run over as Kiki Phil ran to grab the bunt. Throw was a little bit wide, so, you know, had to Indiana Langford had to make the extension there to get out number one. And so now just a lone runner on second, but obviously the tying run in this game is now in scoring position. One out, some small being played by the Hawkeyes. Brings up the three, uh, the three hitter, Tori Bennett, who first time up for uh, Bennett, grounded out to the shortstop. This time, one out, one on at second. Pitch and hit hard, hard to third, stopped it. But again, that's enough. that's going to go down as an error. Yeah, as I don't know. Erickson if they, stopped it, but kind of stumbled, like went down to need to get, but stumbled, couldn't get back up. Yeah, she blocked it, you know, prevented. You know, the runner was going to get on first there, Bennett. Nice, nice hit. We'll see what the official scoring ruling on that is. But the runner does stay at second. So, in terms of runners being in scoring position, that equation remains the same. Still first. And second with one out. They are rolling that as a single for now. And I think Sammy that's probably true. It was a tough play to make. And Sammy D is cleaned up. He's now going to get a chance to do just that with a hard hit to the gap. Will bring in one and might be able to bring in two and give Iowa the lead. One out. First pitch against Diaz goes for a ball. Diaz, a senior, one of the leaders on this team, played every game last year at first base for Hawkeyes as well. And that pitch, there's a hard hit to the outfield. And going to come up on that is Conway, who fields it on the hop and fires it back into the in, uh, infield. But the it bases like are Moss, now juiced. Moss wanted to run for home there, but a great throw by Conway. Scared her off of that. Yeah, so a little bit now meeting at the mat, at the pitcher's circle. Now it gets interesting. Iowa all of a sudden has the bases juiced with one out. Just like that, Hawkeyes are right in this. Bonnie Foles going to come out and give a little inspiration to Dukowski, talk to the infield, let them know what they're doing. Yeah. One out, base is loaded. You do have the force out anywhere, but any hit to the outfield is definitely going to score one. Could score two if it gets behind uh, Sealer or Conway or Stephenson. A crucial moment in this game. Top of the fourth, a one-run game. And up to the plate is going to be the pitcher Devin Greer, who's going to get her get a chance to give herself some run support. Yes, absolutely. Devin Greer on the season again, 296, only two doubles, a uh, slugging of 333. So not someone who gets a ton of those extra base hits, but someone who could at least put the ball in play and get something happening. First pitch for a, a strike. swing there for strike one, I think. I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think check, Greer checked it, but I think they ruled it as a strike anyways. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what's happening now. Down 0-1. Already Durkowski ahead in the count. Base is juiced with second one out. Second pitch and hit hard. Ground ball at second base. Got to turn two. Got him at second, but safe at first. So one run is going to score. Greer covering the distance quick enough, getting that RBI fielder's choice. Yeah, that was a nice... Nice contact there. Was going to be tough to turn two. Langford had to flip it to McVay, and then McVay had to get it to Thole, but the throw to Thole was just not in time. And, of course, with the shorter base pass uh, in softball as well, it was also a little bit trigger turn two sometimes, especially when you had Greer yeah, hauling it's it. it's much harder, yeah. So that will be a one-run scored. First pitch there to Baines goes foul, fouls it off into the right field crowd. One all now after the single by Greer, giving her her own run support. Now runners on first and third. Two outs. Oh, one, uh, oh, one count. And that ball is fouled off again into the right field bleachers. So it's an not 0 2 count. And Drakowski going to try to get out of this one as quick as she can. Yeah, I mean, when you have the bases loaded with one out, if you're going to find a way to only allow one run, you will take that nine times out of ten. You'll take that pretty much every time. Yeah, Kikowski that, one pitch away from doing that. And with the ground ball to second base, that's about as good as you can want. And another hit there straight to second base. Nice play there Pouring by Langford. Out. Line out there. And that'll end the inning. Good the contact game's by Baines, but was hit straight at Langford. Didn't even have to move. Just put the glove up. Caught it. And Michigan does escape a hairy situation with bases loaded at one out. 
was managed to come away, just allowing the one run, just allowing that single to uh, single to Greer, the field's choice, which let Riley Moss score. And with that, takes us to the middle of the fourth, the exact midpoint of today's game. We thank you for joining us here in WCBN Sports Live on YouTube. I am Tim DeGrand, joined by Josh Brown. Uh, it's been not quite as exciting uh, as the last as the double hairs yesterday, uh, but such is the sport. Uh, it's yeah, been but one one. It's been a tight. It's been interesting in a different way. Whereas yesterday was a lot of I will get out, scoring a bunch of runs, and Michigan make their comeback from behind. This has been a lot more interesting of the. Neither team can make a mistake. Neither team is allowed to make a mistake because the margins have been so thin so far in this game. Uh, the first three innings, I would not have a single runner reach base, and then all of a sudden in the fourth, end up with bases loaded, end up being able to score out of that. So now Michigan's got to start making some more happen on the base pads, making some more happen in the batter's box. They do, across the board, um, hit better than the Hawkeyes do. Team, uh, the average average for the team, higher than uh, the Hawkeyes. Uh, while the Hawkeyes do, at the end of the lineup, have you know Lindsey and Jackson, who haven't played as much uh, and have a little bit uh, lower averages. Uh, most everyone on Michigan's team, outside of uh, Ava Castales, uh, has been playing for pretty much the whole season and has a lot of experience and a lot of uh, cohesion in there. Yeah. So they got to start capitalizing on that as we begin the bottom of the fourth with coming up to the plate, number 13, Jesse. Janisa Conway, Conway now. Yeah, Janisa Conway now up to bat for Michigan. Trying to get on base early, set the tone, put some pressure on Greer. First pitch cuts and takes that one fouled behind the plate. 0 1 count now. Yeah, I mean, this could be Michigan getting out to a 10 3 record in the Big Ten. Would be crucial for play. Second pitch coming in. Swung on, hit. Yeah, but that was say foul. Dead ball. She, yeah, Followed off of her own foot, it seems. Yeah, Michigan right now currently sitting third in the Big Ten. So any opportunity, any win would be absolutely massive. And Iowa a little bit more down towards the bottom. Four and six in the conference. Could really use a big win today. The 0-2 count now. Groot taking the pitch. Conway, 225 average, trying to make something happen. It sees that one outside for a ball. Keep herself alive. Does have an OPS of 910 on the year, which is one of the better ones on the team. 1-2 now coming in, swing and a miss. That's going to be a strikeout swinging for Conway. Great job at the plate, but that is another strikeout for her. That is her 28th strikeout on the season. Conway, a little bit of a, a boomer bust kind of uh, hitter with a slightly lower average at 225, but eight home runs on the year. Can't argue with that. Up now, seeing that first pitch through is Ella Stephenson, who sees that first strike in. First at bat flew out to center field. Yeah, Stevenson. 239 batting average on the year. Flew out in her, in her first at bat. Follows that one back to, again, going down 0 2 quick. Yeah. We'd like to see someone on this team start getting some contact. Outside of, that, uh, outside of that first inning, hasn't been a hit since then. Both of the base runners left on base in the last two wings, both from walks. The 0-2 pitch, swung on. She definitely went First across base, there. Yep. First base umpire agrees. Check and struck out. Two strikeouts in a row. Actually, going back to the last thing, that might be three strikeouts in a row. Yeah, no, it's been, Rear has really settled down after yeah. kind of a, a rocky first inning, able to get out of it, just giving up the one run. and. Since then, you know, Michigan's only really been able, Michigan's only had one base runner since then, and that was on a walk, uh, first, I believe. First pitch there to Castales is a strike. Greer is starting to cook, and that could be as disastrous. Yep, that is going back to when uh, Greer struck out Falmont in the last inning. That's three straight Ks for Greer. Yeah, all of a sudden really starting to kind of heat up here and figure out this Michigan lineup. 
That one's seen for a ball, 1-1 one, one now. And that come in the off speed there, again outside, ball two. Castales <laughs> could really help Michigan out, get a two out rally started. 2-1 pitch coming in from Greer, swung on, miss. That's gonna be strike two, 2-2 two, two count now. Two outs and yeah, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Going on and I always have seen a good two two two. Love when all the numbers match up like that. It's very aesthetic. Visually case. visually appeasing, but not what you want if you're Michigan. Absolutely. One strike away from a one two three inning. And the two two pitch comes and that's low for a ball. Count goes to full. Styles, good job of laying off that one. Big payoff fish coming. Michigan trying to just get a base runner here and if it can style us, is that opportunity right here. Pitch in, and he's gonna get walked. That's last. This is the third inning in a row where Greer's issued a two-out walk. The last two times it mounted to nothing as the next batter immediately got out as well. But hopefully this time, Ella McVeigh can make something happen. McVeigh walked her first time up. Ended up stealing the second on that pass ball. Showing bunt. Greer pitching, pulls back, swings on it. Great contact to center field. And it's gonna be caught by Baines. Great job by Baines tracking that one down. Made the last minute adjustment, taking his hop step back. Got under it though. And that's going to be the end of the fourth. Still tied at one all. Michigan is still yet to have a hit. Yeah, you know Michigan hasn't had a hit outside outside the first inning, as yeah. as you were saying, Tim, and you know love a good pitcher's duel here, one one through four, both pitchers pitching well. We'll see if your Cal can kind of had some waffles in the top of the fourth. Now heading into the top of the fifth, had the bases loaded with one out, gave up the one run on a fielder's choice, largely escaped, you know, kind of the worst of it, could have spiraled out of control there, but Michigan tied through four. Looking to quiet back down the Iowa bats heading into the fifth inning. Back half of the game now through four, one to one. It has been, as Josh was saying, a pitcher's duel. Uh, Drakowski started out the game, put down every Iowa batter. Iowa did not see a runner touch base for the first three innings. It was nine up, nine down. Uh, Michigan in that first inning definitely got it to a jump. But it's kind of switched since then. Ever after that first inning, Greer has really locked in. Four strike, uh, three strikeouts now, excuse me. Starting to look really good. And Drakowski's still throwing well, still throwing up the one run, but definitely in that fourth inning, you saw it slip a little bit. Yeah, she's Allowed just got to. Ba bases got loaded. And also, also, I will say, though, to give her some credit, it was also a few, not necessarily errors, but a few rough fielding plays as we begin the fifth. Yeah, it first, wasn't. First yeah. pitch to uh, close to main goes for a ball. It yeah, wasn't like she was giving up just like bombs out to the warning track. Uh, you know, they were kind of, you had that weird hop to Ella McVay and the play that was knocked hit, down by Ayrton. Some weird contact there. Yeah. Oh, one pitch. And that one's low for ball two. Closerman grounded out. First time up to second base. And on the year, a little bit lower average, 218. But when she does lead off an inning, that average jumps up to 412. So we might be seeing something from her as she hits that one again right back to the second baseman, Indiana Langford, for the easy put out. Two at-bats for Klosterman, two ground outs, two second base. And that's a play that you kind of need after the last inning. You need, you know, first batter up, just get an easy out, kind of regain your confidence, settle down a little bit, know it's all going to be okay. And this is going to bring Hannah Lindsay back to the batter's box. Last time struck out looking, but had a great at-bat before that. I was going to see that first strike through. Last time up for Lindsay. Saw the count full, then had a couple of good fouls off. Uh, Followed off a couple of good pitches. Hitting those deep, but uh, fouled but in the foul territory. Uh, and then, of course, struck out looking up that great off-speed pitch. And that off-speed pitch there from uh, Drakowski, same one she threw the first time. That one goes for a ball. So I'm a right move to lay off that one. 1-1 one, one count now. Top of the fifth, one out. Score tied at one. Even count now. 
And that is a hit, grounder to third, fielded by Erickson, thrown over to Thole, and that is two outs quick. And great job of Erickson, kind of getting that confidence back after a yeah. little bit of a biff on the, her last ground ball she got. Getting a clean one there, kind of gets that confidence back, kind of making up for that last one. Because that was a very hard hit ball right at her. Yeah, no, nice, nice play defensively. I, I don't really give her much fault at all for that yeah. play that she – it was really a good play to just knock play. it down. It was a tough – you know, going back to the last inning, like she was lucky to prevent that from going to the outfield. That would have definitely scored that first run. Absolutely. So I think overall, all things considered, it was a decent play and definitely an infield hit. Um, Avery Jackson back up to the plate now. First pitch there, tried to bunt it, but ended up falling out of bounds. <coughs> uh, not out of bounds, foul ball. I've been calling too many different sports recently. Foul ball. So an 0-1 count now. Flew out uh, last time she was up to right field. This pitch fouled back behind the press box. Would back be nice to see if we could, if a ball could flutter up here. It'd be kind of cool to try to catch it. Although oh, hopefully my computer would not get absolutely smashed by a oh, softball. Will, I, I got quick hands. You're not worried about that. Yeah, it's a little tough hands. of the screen. I don't, I don't really know the exact we angle. Do have a, we do have a very awkward angle. It's possible, but, you know. 0-2 pitch coming in. That pitch is low in the dirt. Be the first ball. 1-2 count now. Two outs. The top of the fifth. As the crowd here. Trying to inspire the Wolverines, distract the Hawkeyes. The one-two pitch and hit. Soft grounder back to second base. And that is going to be out. A great field there by Indiana Langford. But the speedy Jackson almost outran that one. Yeah. Again, just you know, good, good, solid, clean fielding from yep. Michigan. Still three up, three down. That brings us to the middle of fifth with the score still tied at 1-1. One, one. Want to thank everyone for tuning in today here on WCBN Sports Radio live on YouTube. I am Tim. This is Josh. We have a lot of fun so far in today's game. Uh, early lead for the Wolverines, uh, putting one run on the board in the first, thanks to a Maddie Erickson single. Uh, next couple innings went by with another team really able to get too much of a grasp. But fourth inning, Iowa managed to load the bases with one out. Um, and a RBI fielder's choice from Devin Greer put one run across, scoring Riley Moss. Uh, Wolverines were able to escape without much more damage after that. And so now the Wolverines in the bottom of the fifth are going to have a great opportunity to reclaim the lead. All it takes is one swing at the bat, and that's the, the beauty of a tie game at one. Pitcher's duel, all it takes is one bad pitch from Devin Greer, and the total complexion of the game could be different. Beautiful day for some baseball. We are getting ready to go. And we're going to be starting up back at the top of the order for the Wolverines. Leadoff batter Ellie Sealer is going to get a chance. Then it's going to be Indiana Langford and Maddie Erickson, the first three up. Of course, Ellie Sealer. Got things started off in the first, uh, hit a double at her first at bat to center field, which is really getting things started. She ended up scoring Michigan's sole run coming around after that. First pitch in there, tries to lay down a bunt, but goes foul. The lefty Adam Monroe, one of the older people on the team, being a junior. Makes her one of the most senior members of this Michigan team that relies heavily on sophomore and freshman help. In fact, only three upperclassmen are in uh, this Michigan batting lot today as the 0-1 pitch comes, hit, swung on, and that ball is going to be Wow, caught. what diving. a diving play by Closerman in left field, diving play. Looked like that ball had a chance at dropping, but Closerman slays out, sacrifices her body for the cause and makes an incredible catch, just inches off the turf for the first out. Yeah, unreal, unreal. great fielding play there by Riley Klosterman Dang. there out in left field. Definitely thought it was off the bat. It was just going to bloop for a single into left field, but that wasn't the case. Excellent fielding play and no runners on base for the Wolverines. Indiana Langford up now. First pitch there, fouls it off. Her first at bat. Uh, had that sack bunt that pushed uh, Sealer over to third, where she eventually scored. Uh, last time up, hard ground out to second base. Now has the 0-1 count. This crew's going to shoot this one in there. 
And again, shuffles up, about to swing, but ends up laying off. And good call as that went high. One, one count. Greer reels back, throws it in, tries to lay it on a bunt. Wow. And the bunt is caught by Avery Jackson, the third baseman. Knew that uh, Langford likes to bunt, likes to hit those little short bloopers. It came running up, dove, and caught that. That's two batters, two diving catches by the Hawkeyes to Just prevent a base hit. He snuffed out the bunt, and made a nice diving play to prevent an infield hit. That's also Excellent tough. play defensively by every Jackson. Yeah. Some nice plays. It's also tough base. for Langford. If you're going to go for that bunt, you, one of the key things, you got to make sure you keep it down so that doesn't happen. And with two outs, up comes Maddie Erickson with the one RBI for the Wolverine team. Sees that first pitch go by for a strike. But yeah, tough, tough couple of plays for the Wolverines. Second pitch, ball high and outside. Yeah, neither one of those were. You can argue a little bit about Langford and you know, maybe getting, you know, got to keep bunts down, whatever like that. But none of those was anything wrong with either what uh, Sealer or Langford did. Just some great plays from his Hawkeye defense. Second, third pitch goes for a ball as well. Count goes to 2 1 for Erickson. Eight homers on the year. One of those would be perfect at a time like this. Follows this one up and over the net. Actually, that one did come a little bit close to us. Did. About five rows ahead of us. Yeah, yeah, no. I think, you know, this is the top of Michigan's order. So, yeah. naturally, this is going to be Michigan's chance to play some runs. And, you know, 1-1 one, one game, anything can – all it takes is one swing of the bat. But, you know, some missed opportunities yeah. there. Just some excellent defensive play there by the Hawkeyes. But missed opportunities there at the 1-2 spot. Michigan's really looking at the heart of their lineup as the 2-1 pitch goes. Sorry, that was the 2-2 two, two pitch at the foul ball. So, that is the strikeout. That's my apologies. The foul ball, about yeah, to count two, two, miss. and that swing to miss is the fourth strikeout for Greer today. Yeah, and uh, a, a very a non-linear one, two, three, two great defensive plays, and then the strikeout, the fourth strikeout of the game for Devin Greer, as now Kelsey will come out for the top of the six. This game is, is flying by, but it's it's a one-one game, and it's still. Fully up for grabs. We're entering the sixth inning now. Both starters still on the mounds. Both teams scratching and clawing for any kind of base hit, for any kind of momentum. But so far, it hasn't been happening for them. Update the innings here as we move into yeah. the top of the sixth. Michigan had one run in the first thanks to an Erickson single bringing home Sealer. And Iowa Greer had the bases loaded. Fielder's choice that brought home Riley Moss. Yeah. And outside and, and outside of that, but outside of those two innings, the first inning for the Wolverines, the fourth inning for the Hawkeyes, neither team has had much offensive firepower today. No, yeah, no. It's, you know, as we've talked about, it's not the theatrics of yesterday, but what we do have is it in a close game chance for Michigan to get its third sweep of Big Ten play, stay close to the top of the Big Ten, and continue to build on the record for Iowa to chance to get one yeah. back after you almost two wonder games they should have won. You almost wonder if these, uh, if the teams, uh, as we start back the top of the order with Riley Moss leading off for the Wolverines, you almost wonder if the teams are maybe not physically tired, but emotionally drained after those games yesterday and decided, you know what, let's just have some, e let's just have an easy game. We're not going to be doing those crazy comebacks or anything. We'll just keep it close. It's the first pitch that Moss sees. Yeah, goes for a strike. Moss got the sixth, uh, or the, the fourth hitting started for Iowa. Yep. Had that single that took a weird hop around Ella McVay at shortstop, got through, and that's what really kind of catalyzed everything. Moss batting 381 on the year now. 1-1 one, one count coming up for her. As pitch goes in, running up, hits that blooper to third. Erickson comes up on it, throws it, but safe. it's late. Moss is safe, really legs out that blooper. Excellent hustle there from Riley Moss. And now the lead run is on base for Iowa, just like that. Very close play. And we'll you see if Michigan looks to challenge it, but it doesn't appear that they're going to do so. 
Oh, never mind. It looks like Coach Bonnie Cole coming out. Come out and talk about this, potentially challenge it. Got some of the replay room and trying to signal down or whatever it is. But looks like Michigan's going to potentially look to challenge this. See if he see if Ma or Moss was safe. Yep. They're going to look at it. They are going to challenge. Yeah. Michigan is going to challenge this and take a take a video look. I think well, it's probably a worthwhile challenge. Looks like a looked like a very close play initially when was. the throw came from. Erickson. Uh, from Erickson, you know, you definitely, th I definitely thought it was going to be out, but when the throw came to first, looked like Moss might be safe, but it was so close. I think it's a worthwhile challenge. We'll see if they show a replay here on the on the screen here, but, but you definitely see, close. Bang, bang play. You've seen Riley Moss kind of going for this a lot, where as pitch is coming, and she kind of starts to take a few steps forward to just lay down a quick little hit not necessarily yeah. like a, it's somewhere between a bunt and a full swing and that's what i think kind of adds a little bit to the, the unique nature of softball is the yeah. it's so close you know the bases are so compact so naturally you can lay down bunts and easily get easily a lot you know get, get a, get a legitimate single so on the baseball fields which speaking of the wolverines baseball team is starting action just across the way the looks like michigan has a runner on Hard to fully see, but it looks like it's the bottom of the first. Michigan has a runner on first. You do end up wanting to check out that baseball game. We are also do have um, simultaneous coverage of that on a different stream on the same channel. So you can go to uh, the baseball stream on the same YouTube channel. But you know, maybe wait until after this game is done before you go over there. We want to we want to make sure that our softball numbers are being their baseball numbers. Just point of pride. And the review comes back and call stands. Ryan Moss saying it was safe. It was a very bang bang play. And you know what, that that's an understandable challenge from uh, Coach Bonnie Full, especially in a game like this. If you can almost steal an extra out like that, it's going to be very crucial. So we 100%. go now, no outs, runner on first, and up comes Jenna Young. And again, Jenna Young's going to bunt this one. And again. That will be an out. And again, for this, uh, second straight at bat, Jenna Young sack bunts to push Moss over to second. That's yeah. exactly how that fourth inning got started. You gotta in these in these one one games where hits and runs are very hard to come by, you gotta be willing to play the small ball. And now a base hit with you know, I, I would have to imagine I was gonna be aggressive on the base pass here. Absolutely. With how valuable a run can be. Not obviously being reckless, but aggressive in trying to send. First pitch to Tori Bennett, hard ground ball right back to the pitcher. And everyone's safe. Ah. That was first pitch, Tori Bennett had a hard ground ball right back at the shin of Drakowski. Kind of rolled up and bounced off of her leg over to Erickson. Seems like Drakowski's okay, but yeah, kind of ricocheted and he caromed off of the shin of Lauren Drakowski, Maddie Erickson, but by the time she corralled and fielded it, you had Moss advance to third. Erickson's just going to take a kind of practice to make sure she's all right. Look like it's a little bit of hurt, but because of that awkwardness, it bounced over to Erickson. And Riley Moss was kind of right there, but it was awkward positioning, couldn't quite make the tag, wasn't going to be enough time to get the throw over first. And in a situation like this, you don't want to like risk that throw, have it go wild, and then the runner just gets to walk home. Yeah. Coach Thole checking in on Trotowski now. Runners at the corners with yeah, one meeting, out. Meeting of the minds here. And the cleanup hitter, Sammy Diaz. On the year, no home runs, 15 RBIs, two doubles, uh, slugging of 3.09. Yeah, she had the base hit in the third, in the or in the fourth inning to load the bases. Went out, and this is a big spot here. You have the lead run on third, double play would obviously end the inning with the runner on first. But here, you really need a strikeout or something small where you can get the out and hold the runner at third. Can't you know let that. Conversation happening on the infield. This is an interesting position because the first thing that you learn when you're playing Little League ball back in the days, when you're at first and third, first baseman's got to try to steal, so they throw it down. You can try to get a yeah. free run. Yeah, I know the, the free shot. So yeah, they might like be the discussing thing. strategy. If it's an infield ground, where do they go? Do they throw it home? Do they hold? Do they try to get the force out? Do they try to turn to? Infield is way in, creeping up. You don't want to, especially with one out too. First I would definitely be aggressive ball. in trying to get to second because there's no Michigan has no incentive to throw down. You don't want that. You don't want Moss at third to try to head home. Absolutely. First pitch was the ball. Valmont came up ready to throw that one if the runner went. And that pitch just fouled off almost back into the uh, Wolverine dugout. 
So it goes to 1-1 one, one count now. But yeah, infield is playing incredibly in. And Velamont is coming up at a first pitch, came up out of her stance. Ball cocked, ready to throw it down the second base. And uh, Bennett on first has been making some strong secondary leads. So the same idea as the senior, one of the most tenured players on this Iowa team, takes the 1-1 one, one pitch, swings through it. Strike two. A strikeout here would be absolutely critical, preventing any chance of runners advancing. You know, the, the value of a strikeout here with one out in first and third is absolutely massive. And the pitch in, that one hit hard. Shortstop steps in the tags the runner, tries to get it first, but safe. A little bit of an interesting fielding play. McVeigh tried to tag. It was, a, it was first, it was, but it the was, run scores. Yeah, it was definitely an awkward thing. Is that ball was, it was hit hard up the middle, and uh, McVeigh kind of came across to field it. Went to like like motion to go step on the bag, but then it was like, no, I'm gonna tag the runner out. I can't get caught up. Might have had shot at the double play. Yeah, I think that was definitely a missed opportunity to double play there. It's a little bit of a fielder's choice. McVeigh could have stepped on the bag, gone the out at second, and the out at first would have been the double play. Greer up, hits the first pitch, foul high, and it goes out of bounds. Uh, not out of bounds, foul ball. I gotta stop doing that. Uh, first pitch, foul ball. It's like a high arcing foul ball down the left field line. Uh, and Sealer did make a running dive at trying to catch that one, but unfortunately didn't. But with the result of that last play, that uh, ground ball by Sammy Diaz, meant that Riley Moss did score from third. Her second run scored of the day. Diaz's first RBI. Puts it to two to one, Iowa leading over the Wolverines. Nothing we haven't seen before this weekend, but in a game as close as this, in the sixth inning, we're really coming down to the wire here. A one-one count facing Greer. Drakowski winds up and throws it ball high. Slot in first. There. Ball number two. He has that first. Two outs, two balls, one strike. And Greer, last time up, did have that fielder's choice uh, that ended up scoring the first run for the Hawkeyes. Here, this one fouls back way behind the grandstand. Again, back to the train tracks as a couple of younger fans run out to see if they can't bring that ball home. Even count now, two balls, two strikes with two outs and Sammy Diaz on first. One runs, Arvin scores winning. Hawkeyes now lead, that pitch is low for a ball. Count goes full. Yeah, big payoff pitch here. Michigan really needs to find it. You don't want two base runners on, and you got to keep this deficit at one to keep it within one swing of the bat here. Top six. Absolutely. Drakowski winds, throws, and it hits Greer in the back. A hit by pitch there. Lost control of that walk it one. off. Not what you want, Lauren Drakowski. Greer looks to be all right, but definitely, as anyone who's been hit by a pitch before knows, a little frustrating it can be. Just gonna walk it off for a bit. We'll see if you are gonna hit anywhere, getting hit in the broad side of your back is definitely Yeah, turn around and do the right thing. Could have you know, there's always worse. Uh, it's gonna sting, but uh, it seems like she's walking it off and it's gonna be okay. Usually you see a little bit to see for that pain to subsize just a little bit. So with that hit by pitch, which also counts as uh, I believe Drakowski's first base on balls today. So Greer is going to get applauded as she jogs off the field. Iowa is going to pinch run for her. Uh, number, tw number 20, Devin Simon, a freshman infielder, is going to be able to get a chance to pinch run with two outs. So now two on with Diaz on second, and now Simon running for Greer on first. And Grace Baines comes up to bat now. Last time lined out to the second baseman. First pitch here, swung on, foul tipped back into the net. Go for the first strike. This is the senior center fielder out of Kansas City. Yeah, Hawkeye's now threatening with two, two runners on, two outs. 
trying to keep the deficit at one if you're Durkowski in Michigan. That pitch there goes for a ball. Last season as a junior started 59 games. Was second on the team with 33 RBIs, had five home runs. And actually had two home run performance in the NISC championship game on May 20th. And that's a second hit batter. Wow, and now the bases are loaded in Iowa with a opportunity to blow this game wide open. All of a sudden, which was at one point, two outs. Just one runner on, two hit by pitches in a row, and Iowa threatening with the bases loaded. It was a full count with two outs, and all of a sudden, two hit by pitchers later, bases are loaded for Briley uh, Klosterman. That first pitch there in for strike one. Klosterman, two ground outs so far but the lefty has an opportunity to blow this game wide open. Iowa already one run score this inning. Base is loaded now. And that pick is pitch. also a strike. 0-2 oh, count now. Grakowski starting to rein it back in. Got to stop the bleeding here if you're Grakowski in Michigan. This is a huge pitch coming up here. But the base is loaded. Chance to keep it at just pitch. one run deficit. Outside. Great eye there by Klosterman. Still a one-two count, plenty of opportunity for Dukowski to get the strike out here. The home state girl from uh, North Liberty, Iowa, joins this team, four-year senior, swings, foul tips, back, stays alive to fight another pitch. Now, still one-two count, the opportunity is still there. A play at any base would get this third out. Force all around the diamond. Pitch, grounder, shortstop, and that's going to score a run. There was no real play there. That was a slow roller hit in between third and shortstop. Back at it stopped there by McVay. Just found kind of that gap, and all runners are safe, and now the Hawkeyes are up 3-1, with still the bases loaded. So still those opportunities to blow this game open. 3-1 still is doable. You absolutely cannot let it get to 4-1. McKay fielded it clean, but there was, by the time she got it, there was no good play. Hannah Lindsay stepping up into the box now. First pitch strike right down the heart of the plate. Thank you guys for sticking around. This game is all of a sudden changing drastically. Yeah, 3-1 lead for Iowa now with Hannah Lindsay up to bat. Lindsay's 0-1 count. Second pitch coming in. Off speed, and Lindsay swung right through that one. Strike two, 0-2 oh, count now, two outs, bases loaded. Two runs have already gotten across in this sixth inning. Third pitch in, crucial pitch, and strike three. Got him looking again, another great off speed there. Catches the outside corner. Michigan gets out of the inning, but damage was absolutely done. Two runs come across for Iowa and they nag a two-run lead. However, as we've seen, Michigan is a resilient group. They've come back from deficits far greater than this in this series alone. So this is almost where they're comfortable. This is their comfort zone. So this is now nothing new. six outs to work with. Got to get two runs across to extend the game. Now it's up to them to see if they can bring it back and knock this game up or even take the lead. Nothing new for this Wolverine team as they've been coming from behind all weekend long. But this was a game where Michigan seemed to be in control for the first three innings, scoring that run in the first, really handicapping that lineup, preventing the batters from getting anything happening on the base paths. But all of a sudden, Greer on the mound, locked in, has not let anything up since that first inning. Four strikeouts. No earned runs in the last four innings. Only a handful. Michigan only two hits on the day. Both came in the first inning. Michigan has been no hit for the last four innings. And we enter the bottom of the six here. Yeah, Mich Michigan really struggling to get hit. I mean, they got two hits in the first inning, and since then they've been held hitless. They've, their bats have gone absolutely quiet, but it's not too late to wake them up. 
all it takes is, you know, you're only two runs down. I was really gone to Lauren Durkowski. We'll see if she comes out for the seventh inning. Will be maybe dependent on, I mean, she's been able to limit some of the deficits, but Iowa has been able to get runs across. But the Michigan, but I think the story of the game is you give up three runs, that's okay. It's the first, first swing swim. there from fouled off behind by Kiki Thole. But the story of the game has really been Michigan's inability to kind of get some of those opportunities early, but then Iowa playing some good situational baseball, just been able to find those gaps and ultimately just get get runners on base and. Keep second, the train moving. Second pitch there, high. <coughs> Count goes to 1-1. One, one. The heart of the lineup here with Thole, Valmont, and Conway could really use something happening. 1-1 one, one pitch on its way, and a big hit to the outfield. Back against the wall, and it's gone! Home run by Kiki Thole. Puts that one over the center field wall. And just like that, this Michigan team has some life in them. Their first hit since the first inning is a deep shot by the cleanup hitter, by the senior. Her 12th home run on the season. And that is exactly what Michigan needed at this time. You're talking about Michigan's lack of hitting, not getting a hit since the first inning. And that's one way to break it open. That ball just clear the right center field wall for a home run. But it's a home run nonetheless, and just like that, Michigan's within one swing away from tying this game. Excellent hit by Kiki Thole out to right center. And Great job, after her 12th home run, she's the power bat on team. We talked about that on earlier on in the broadcast. Now, now Michigan's Lily, within one. Lily Valmont gets to come up and keep this going. First pitch there, swung on a foul back behind the dish. That was interesting, though, because it looked like Baines was tracking the whole way down. And we'd seen a couple, uh, we'd seen that Erickson had a deep fly ball earlier in the game. We'd seen a couple people hit out there. And this one just kind of kept going, kept going, kept going. And yeah, Jake said, just managed to creep over. Baines it looked like she might have had a chance to rob it for a second, but didn't quite. Second pitch there, outside ball. 1-1 one, one count, no outs. And Lily Valamont struck out looking her last time up. Popped down the infield her first time up. That Bad one. swing and a miss there. That, was, that pitch was very low. Swung on it in the dirt. Bit on the off speed. Michigan still six outs to work with to try to find one run. Going to take more than just that one swing in the back. One-two pitch. Ball just missed that one. Evens it out 2-2. Two, two. Valamont, who's been the, the catcher for every game that Michigan's had so far this year. Seven doubles, four homers. Something in the gap would be exactly what this Wolverine team needs right now. 2-2 two -two pitch on its way and swung a hard ground ball right back up the middle. And that is going to be a single for Valamont. And Excellent base hit there from Lily Valamont. Right in, fired. right past rear in the center field. Ground ball there and that the tying run is now on base with no outs. And Valamont is fired up on first page. And out comes Coach Gillespie. Iowa now starting to get close to being on the vert. Looks like a little bit of a change made there by, by Coach Bonnie Thole in the lineup. And will there be a mount, a meeting, a uh, mount? I'm having a stroke. Mound a visit. A, a mound visit, a meeting on the mound. Uh, Michigan's call for a pinch runner. Uh, number 17, Lexi Delamonica is going to come in and pinch run for Valamont. The freshman infielder. Hasn't had too many opportunities, but is getting a great chance to pinch run here. You're going to see if Iowa makes a pitching change, if they're going to stick with Greer, who has been great most of the game. Now Michigan, this is a big opportunity. Crowd starting to get back into it as the Wolverines are within one run, tying run on base, and now coming up to bat for Michigan Number will be 13. Janisa Conway. This is a big spot for her. You gotta keep things moving here. Like we said, Delamonte now pinch running, is a true freshman infielder, mostly just used in these pinch hitting situations, has had a few at-bats throughout the year, but is primarily a uh, utility base runner on first. No outs, and up comes Conway. First pitch is gonna lay down a bunt, great bunt there. 
And he saved it first. At first, Jackson came all the way up, fumbled it very briefly. And that waffle was all she needed. She was trying to just advance the runner second, but you might as well just get on base yourself if you can. And now, runners on first and second, and the lead run is now aboard and on base here. Tying run on second, go ahead on first, stepping into the box. 25, Ella Stevenson. Yeah, and now we do have a little bit of a pinch, pinch runner situation as Della Monica is now the pinch runner in replace of, I believe, Valamon. But Ella Stevenson coming up to the plate. So you have Della Monica at second, Conway at first. Pitch in, again, trying to lay down a bunt. Missed it, and they're saying it was tipped. They had Della Monica going for the steal on that one. The pitch, it did end up going wild, probably because it was um, tipped uh, by Stevenson. So, 0 1 count now. Still no outs in this inning. Michigan's done all this with, without recording it out. Second pitch on its way. Swung on, hit, hard ground ball right back to Greer. And that's going to be, goes to third base, get the force out. Yeah, get the lead runner out too. Dylan Monica kind of instinctively thought like she was going to go back to second for realizing that. Oh, wait, no, it's a force. I have to go. But even if she had gone, still probably wasn't going to make it. It was a hard hit right back to Greer. So now one out. Still two on. And Ava Castile is up now. Bang 304. Pretty solid average. Ball. Oh, strike. Excuse me. A late strike call there. Yeah, strike call there. One out in the inning. The tying run is on second. The lead run is on first. But and they both have to get across or else the Hawkeyes still still be in front. Pitch in. High. Missed. So far, De Castellas has walked. And over one on the day. Over one day with a walk and then uh, grounding out a uh, fielder's choice to first. For a big spot me, here for the freshman. Pitch in, lets it go low. 2-1 count now. Excuse me, Castellas uh, fouled out to first baseman. At her first at bat, walked last time and gets a chance on the year. Four homers, 17 RBIs can add to that here. Pitch swung, hard drive to left field. It's deep, it's going, and that ball is out of here. A deep drive to left field. A three-run shot blows this game wide open for the Wolverines as they retake the lead, and just like that is five to three. Her fifth homer on the year, the true freshman. The comeback kids, the Michigan comeback Wolverines, they don't care what score it is. And honestly, they might even like it more when they're losing. One, this is their third straight multi-run comeback. Three now they take the lead. Runs. Two homers in the inning. And a four-run inning with still only one out on the board. Incredible displays there. What a moment for the freshman. Sail it right over the wall in left field and goes oh, out play. and the game and the total complexion of the game is completely different. As we do have a pitching change now for the Hawkeyes as Devin Greer's day is done after giving up that three run shot. And Michigan now ahead and in front, not just by one, but by two runs. It's a five three game now. And coming, Wolverines in front. And coming onto the mound for the Iowa Hawkeyes will be number 12, Jalen Adams, the sophomore. It's a right-handed pitcher, same as Greer. She's going to get a chance to warm up here. And we can take a second to recap this incredible sixth inning for the Wolverines. Started off with cleanup batter Kiki Thole, who solo homered to right center field, getting things kind of started off. Being the first that Michigan's had in a while, kind of getting Michigan back on the board, kind of starting to close that gap. After that, he would come on, you had Lily Valamont come on and single her way aboard. You then had Jenna, Janissa Conway come on. And she also managed to get herself on board. After that, Ella Stevenson grounded uh, Fuller's Choice right back to Greer on the mound. Got the force out at third. And then, of course, you just saw Ava Castales came up and 
buried that ball over the left field fence. And we're now returning from action. Ella McVeigh, the nine hitter, back up. Clear bases in front of her thanks to that home it's run. still only one out, too. Uh, it's still only one out. First time up, McVeigh walked and then stole second on a pass ball. Last time up, flew out to the center fielder. And this time, she's again going to poke to the center field, and that ball's going to drop for a single. And Wolverines are on a heater right now. McVeigh's first hit of the day gets her on first with the top of the order coming up. Yeah. There's a very good chance we may see every Michigan batter this inning. Because coming up next to the Timmy Trumpets is Ellie Sealer, doubled in the first. And since yeah, Michigan very close to batting around as Keith began this inning. Feels like forever ago with that leadoff home run. And now oh, yeah. all of a sudden Michigan played four runs in this inning. Coming back. First pitch for Sealer on the way. Off speed. Misses outside. Sealer so far today doubled her first time up. Then uh, last uh, second inning popped out to the infield. And then uh, the fifth inning, last inning, uh, of course, had that what we thought was going to drop in left field, but an incredible diving play from Klosterman. That's in there for a strike. One just, one count now for Sealer. Yeah, just what an inning for Michigan. You know, they 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 really do thrive in these in these spots when they're behind. I mean, it's you know, it's it's becoming a pattern, and you know, part of it's obviously Iowa's inability to hold leads, and it's also Michigan's resilience, and they find comfort when they're when they're trailing. That pitch there swung on and fouled off. Fouled off by Sealer there, bring the count to one, two. One ball, two strikes, one out, runner on first. Four runs have already been scored this inning for the Wolverines. Sealer takes the pitch, off speed, a high. And McVeigh is dancing off first base there. But each and every time, Lindsay is the catcher, is up, ready to throw it. It's not letting this happen. 2-2 two, two count, pitch in. Ball, great eye there from Sealer. Getting this count back to full. Sealer, one for three on the day. Bats 368 overall. 14 RBIs, four homers. It's gonna take the full count pitch here. Swings on it, a little blooper to shortstop. And it's gonna get thrown out at first, but McVeigh's gonna get advanced over to second. Really yeah, no, there. still a ni nice play there. So two outs with a runner on second, and up comes Indiana Langford. Langford has not yet registered a hit. Had that sack bunt in the first, and the ground out and a pop out in the infield. Yeah, Michigan very close to fully batting around. If, if Langford gets on base, Erickson will be the ninth. Um, batter Michigan is brought to the plate this inning Michigan looking at some potential substitutions here as there's a an infield meeting also including uh, left fielder Klosterman for I'm assuming a good reason a yeah, little little update going on in the in the baseball game it looks like Michigan baseball is up 4-0 uh -huh. right now good for them Got, yeah yeah no going on there got the other broadcast team for WCBN so you don't have to Little little information, so maybe you don't necessarily need to go oh, back and forth. Little update there, grand slam for the Wolverines on the the baseball diamond. But now back here on the dirt softball field, Carroll Hutchins Stadium, Indiana Langford's up to bat. First pitch for Langford is low, dropped by Lindsey. McVay thought about going, but thought better of it, retreated back to second base. First pitch ball, 1-0 count, two outs. Indiana Langford so far today 0-2 with that sacrifice bunt, a ground out, and a pop out. Second pitch on its way, sees that one through. That's a strike there, 1-1 one, one count. A little base hit here, base hit to the outfield, could potentially score McVay. We've seen McVay so far today show off her legs. Quick on the base pads, and actually Indiana lays down a bunt that's gonna run it out, and she's gonna leg out. Let's throw the first. A little rundown here. Lay up for the first. And everyone's safe. Good job there. Base running by the Wolverines. As the, the bunt was laid down, McVay took off for third. That's where Iowa tried to get the tag out. 
but uh, McVeigh was able to get to third. A little bit awkward there. Looks kind of like slid over the bag, but kept her hand on it. And so Indiana uh, tried to like, you know, maybe I go to second. Got it halfway there yeah. for. Uh, got uh, scared back down to first. So now it's two outs with runners on the corners, and Maddie Erickson. We have now officially batted around. Every Wolverine is going to get to see the plate today. Erickson singled her first time up, had that RBI single in the first. We could maybe add a second one now with a good shot somewhere. Erickson, eight homers on the year. Yeah, Michigan now officially batting around in this inning. Pitch. Everyone's getting at bat here. First pitch called strike against Erickson. Michigan here with an opportunity to extend this lead, add on another insurance run. Already with a two run lead, we'll be heading into the top seven. With a bit of a lead. Pitch in, off speed, and a slow swing from Erickson ends up tipping that one off. Fouled back. Now an 0 2 count with two outs and two on, runners at the corners. 0-2 oh, count with two outs. Getting the pitch is Adams. That one again fouled off. Count's going to stay as is at 0-2. Oh, Oh, two, two outs here. Swung on again, fouled off. Adams did pitch this last weekend. Uh, registered four innings in the first game and uh, two thirds of an inning in the second. Yeah, nine inning record on the season, 2.4 ERA. Adams was a pitcher in the first game that came in that allowed Michigan to get that comeback going. Pickoff Ooh. attempt at third as the runner, as Indiana Langford takes second base. So now two runners in scoring position for the Wolverines. But now, you know, Jalen Adams, she gives up about a 306 batting average, actually, with two outs. So, but 237 with runners on. So someone that, you know, she doesn't fare as well when there's two outs. It's interesting here as that pitch, that pitch is, is low, and it's now a 2-2 count. Pitch in the dirt with that last pitch that also fell its way into the dirt is now a 2-2 count. Erickson did a great job of following up a few pitches, staying off the balls. So now a 2-2 two -two count with two outs and two runs scoring position. Swung on and fouled again. Grounder in foul territory down the left field line. Again, still staying alive. And now with Langford stealing over the second, a base hit could potentially get two more runs in and give a great old cushion for the top of the seven. Pitch in. The off speed. speed misses outside. Great job from Erickson laying off it. And now full count. Full count. This crowd stomping, clapping, trying to will Erickson to something. The pitch in, swung on, foul again. Erickson is ahead of a lot of these pitches. Every foul has been down the left field line. So she's in front of Adams. Could be a, due to a change in velocity from Greer. Could just be the way Erickson was because that single was hit to the left field. Last time up, she struck out. So Hope would make a little bit of amends here with two in scoring position. The 3-2 pitch in, swung it again, fouled off. What a big what payoff pitch bat. coming up here as got two runners in scoring position with two outs. A chance to load the bases here, actually. Pitch in, hit high fly ball into left field. Shortstop waves him off, and that's Bennett coming up Tory, with that catch. Yeah, yeah Tori Bennett. It was a low pitch, probably would have actually been ball four, but Matty Harrison swung in it, but a great inning nonetheless for Michigan, and Michigan now three outs away from getting a big series sweep over the Hawkeyes and letting the Hawkeyes once again rue their missed opportunities here after taking a two-run lead heading into the bottom of the that sixth. That was an 11-pitch at-bat for Maddie Erickson, just continuously foul, uh, fouling pitches off, 
staving off the bad ones. Unfortunately, could not super capitalize on it. Ends up with now. The ball looked like it potentially had a chance of dropping, but a great play there from Bennett to get underneath it. And with that, five to three, Wolverines over Hawkeyes after a two home run inning. Yeah. As we move into the top of the seventh, what could be the last half inning we see today. But let's circle back. I mean, that was just a just a very dominant inning from the Wolverines. Four runs. Started with that solo home run from Kiki Thaw, and then Michigan gets everyone up to play to bat. Have the three-run home run there by Eva Costales, and what a what a moment for her oh, yeah. as a freshman, a designated player for Michigan. Just a, just a beautiful swing of the bat there. Three-run home run. Not only, you know, Michigan was losing at that point. It's a massive swing. You're down, going from down 5-2 to all of a sudden leading by not just one run, but two. So a massive swing. You add on that insurance run. Give Sierkowski a little bit of a cushion to work with here as Michigan will play Michigan State this coming week in a midweek contest. And we'll begin this inning off <coughs> with a pinch hitter. Number nine, Titania Roman will lead off the inning. She'll be batting in place. A little little substitution here going on for the Wolverines as um, Clark Harborough is now going to be at first base. And Valmont will be moving to catcher, back to catcher. So a little bit of some substitutions here for the Wolverines. I Riley think the, the Valmont to Maka is just because of the pinch running that she did for Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's back to catching. Kirk Harborough is now in at first. And not only did that change, but it is also for the Hawkeyes. Uh, pinch hitting, number nine, like I said, number nine, Tatiana, Tatiana Roman. Roman, junior, usually plays in the outfield, gets a pinch hit here. One hit in 15 at bats. Trying to get a little spark happening here. Is pinch hitting for Avery Jackson at the bottom of the lineup. So after this, the Hawkeyes will have the top of their order with Moss, Young, and Bennett, which that top of the order has been the trouble spot for uh, the Wolverines and been for Durkowski uh, throughout today's game. Two-zero pitch coming up as a strike. Nope, that's still a ball. Excuse me. It's a three-zero count now. Yeah, three-zero now, and any base runner brings the tying run to the plate. So this game is far from over. Michigan had those opportunities to add those insurance runs, and the. 3-0 pitch is the first strike. Just got to put that one over the plate. And again, Roman doing that same kind of getting the head start, the jogging start in the box, trying to lay down a little bunt, little blooper, uh, and the corners are in. They recognize that. 3-1 pitch, and that is high. That's going to be a walk. Yeah, five-pitch walk there, only one strike. And that was on the 3-0, so the tying run's now at the plate for Iowa. Riley Moss, who's been very good for the Hawkeyes today, two, two singles, both two infield hits, actually, will now be up to bat. Great job of legging out those infield hits. And we will hits. have a pinch runner come on for Iowa. Number That's two, Georgia, Georgia Lesman. Lesman. Yeah, so Lesman will be the pinch runner, the freshman, trying to add that speed on the bases. But this is a big at bat, you know. Riley Boss Ooh, is. Wait, Avery. No, that's Avery Jackson. Actually, they made another change. Avery not Jackson yeah. is in. Yes, yeah, so it'll be Avery Jackson as the as a pinch runner. Coming back to base path. Yeah, not number two, number twenty-eight. We definitely both saw number two run out there, though, right? I'm not making that up, right? I don't know. Interesting. Anyways, maybe 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 we got maybe we got duped. We might be going crazy. I haven't been sleeping well recently. This possible. Anyways. Uh, Riley Moss up again, trying for that little bunt blooper. Erickson is walking in, ready for it, and fouled off again. To get to strike two. Each of those two pitches fouled off behind the plate. A crucial at bat here, as Riley Moss has been incredible today. That will end, and it's going to strike out swinging. That pitch looked to be a little bit too high. She swung right underneath it. 
And that's the first out of the day. And the third strikeout for Drakowski. One out now. Still Avery Jackson up first. Yeah, that was Young. a big first out there. Got the strikeout. Jenny Young. The key, the key right now is not on that runner at first. It's at the runner at the plate because that's okay. a tying run. I was a Jenny Young so far today. Um, two at two sacrifice bunts. Uh, last time those runners on first, so we may be seeing something similar to that again with the uh, runner first. Yeah, I think in this situation though, but, you cause you yeah. can't have a sacrifice. You don't. You can't get that second out. Obviously, a bunt could work if you if you. Got to get on base, but it's not about scoring that run on first. It's about scoring the runner exactly. at the plate. So she is not showing bunt. She is instead likely instructed to swing away as the pitch comes. Popped up. Foul territory. Erickson's going to make a run at it. Couldn't quite get it, though. But all three of Erickson, uh, McVeigh, and Sealer all made a run for it, but dropped down in foul territory. A two, uh, one two count now. One ball, two strikes for Bennett. Excuse me, for Young. We're looking to end this thing as soon as possible. Swing in, pitch in, excuse me. Did not swing as a ball. Count goes even, two balls, two strikes. A tense moments here. You do not want to get that time run on base here, especially with just one out. So this is a, this is a big, big set of pitches coming up right here for Drakowski. And in, 2-2 two -two pitch, swung on hit, hard, drive to right center field, and that ball is gone. That was an incredible drive from Jenna Young. Her fourth home run on the year. She's the only Hawkeye to record any home runs this year. Any Hawkeye in this lineup. And that's her fourth, 17th, 16th, and 17th RBIs. Yeah, that was a no-doubter. Off the bat, you could tell that that was going to be a home run. An excellent swing there by Jenna Young. And That's her fourth home run on the year. The only Hawkeye in this lineup that has a home run. So that's now her fourth. And now it's a totally different complexion of this game. You're looking at a tie game. Iowa now trying to take the lead. Still only one out. Tori we could Bennett. be heading extras here. Tori Bennett back up, sees that first ball go by her. Tori Bennett has... Two singles so far today. Each of the last two at-bats is singled, grounded out her first time up. And Durkowski had been doing better after that fourth inning. But that you just, sometimes you just can't do much about it. And that was, as you said, it was a no-doubter. It was driven hard. It wasn't a moonshot. It was a very dr drive out there. With the pitch clock winding down. Drakowski and swung on, missed. Be Two interesting to see count. if you know they, they trust her to get out of this inning. This is important. You want to give yourself a chance to walk it off in the bottom of the inning. Iowa making their last ditch effort here with that home run there from Young. And happens in there for a strike, so the count's now even at two and two. But we could easily be staring down the possibility of extra inning base, but or extra inning softball rather here at Carroll Hodgins Stadium. And now, 2-2 two -two pitch. It's just and inside. Did not inside. get the call. Count goes full. McKay, officer works to support, walking up towards the mound. And Durkowski, full count, one out. Pitch in, and she's gonna walk. All four it is inside again. The lead run is now on first base with just one out. You have to imagine they could be looking at a pitching change here, and that's what seems like it's gonna happen. As yep, coach, coach coming, coming out. out. Gonna go talk to the home plate ump. Iowa dugout spelling their school name as if we were unaware. And it will be pitching James Drakowski. A solid game from her today. Yeah, an, an up and down game, game, but one that she had the chance to get the win and, you know, started she would be responsible with the loss if this runner on first score. So now 
coming out to well of a pitching change for Michigan. Started out absolutely incredible. Put the first night, retired each of the first nine batters she saw. Then of course that fourth inning, worked to the bases loaded, one run scored, but managed to get out with without much more damage. But then yeah, last inning, the two runs getting across. Uh, after the two hit batters uh, with a full count with two outs resulted in two hit batters, which resulted in two run scoring. Uh, and then of course the home run just allowing um, an up and down performance from her for sure. But now taking the mound for the Wolverines, number 21, Hannah George, the senior right, excuse me, right-handed pitcher day today. <laughs> yeah, the, the lead run on, on first and Hannah George out of Columbus, Georgia. Hannah George. Saw some action yesterday. Pitched six innings, eight hits, two runs off of errors. No, sorry, excuse me, two are earned runs, not errors. Allowed two runs yesterday. It's now take now gonna try to close things out here. Pitch in Sammy Davis. Pitch was low in the dirt. Yeah, this this game is now what started as a pitcher's duel is now turning into just a you know. Now we're getting a shootout. We want. Yeah, you're getting into the the craziness of the game. Second and pitch, ball miss again. Yeah, Hannah George now the pitcher for the Wolverines with a 2.66 ERA, one on one record on the year and 23.2 innings pitched. Hoping Wolverine. to get the, these critical two outs to keep this game tied and give the Wolverines a chance to walk it off in the bottom of the seventh. Tory Bennett on first, one out, count at two balls, no strikes. Third pitch fouled off. Diaz got ahead of that one, pulled that foul against the dugout. Two one count now. Yeah, Mi Diaz. Michigan just really trying to survive kind of the the one through fourth spot of this this Hawkeyes lineup. This has really been having problems all day. Diaz last inning. Had that fielder's choice single, scored one of those runs. Uh, scored Riley Moss, the first run that got across that inning. That, that hit grounded. to the shortstop, going to second. And safe. There. McVay flipped it, tried to toss it to Indiana Langford, but safe at second. Couldn't get there in time. So now runners on first and second. The Still lead run runs. Out. Lead and run is on base, and this inning is turned from one that is already a you know blown opportunity to seal the game. It's a win for Durkowski. And now the lead run is on scoring position with still just one out. This game has really kind of changed its complexion as it's continued. Pinch runner comes in, Echo Mattiello, number 33, comes in to pinch run for Sammy Diaz. It was a sophomore. In the outfielder, got some playing time, but again, much similar to um, what it was earlier. Uh, mostly used in this uh, pinch running capacity. First pitch in there for a strike. Delamonica is who I was looking for. Much like Delamonica for the Wolverines is number 33. Mattel for the Hawkeyes. Some playing time, but primarily being used in this pinch running capacity put her speed on the base pass. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of on its way and that is high for a ball. 1-1 one, one count now. Still one out runners on first and second. Yeah, George in the the thick of cleanup duty here, damage control. Two runners on. Got to find a way to get out of this with a 1-1 one, one count here. And now we are the pitchers on some damage at the plate one, today. 1-1 one count as low and away for another ball, two to one now. Score tied up at 5-5. Five, five. Michigan had taken a great lead in the bottom of the sixth. Making a little bit of a comeback, but the uh, Hawkeyes responded with a shot from Jenny Young, the two-run shot. And now Greer with that cut fouls it off. Make the count 2-2. Two, two. Greer, of course, had the first RBI uh, for the Haw uh, for the Hawkeyes back in the fourth, uh, singled home. 
I believe it was Riley Moss who singled in. 2-2 two -two count. This is a critical pitch to get one out away. It feels like Michigan's been stuck at one out pitch for a while. And hit high fly ball left field. It comes up underneath it. Does Sealer. Easy play there. Greer's got a little bit too much underneath that one. Pops it up. And Sealer made a great play running in on it. So we now have two outs with runs on first and second. A force out at any base. Yeah, and what was good about that, that ball going out to left field is if that was in right, you might have had the opportunity for um, you know, potential for Bennett to tag up and sacrifice and get to third. But now still s stuck on second, but two outs. Baines up, first pitch singles it. I'm sorry, not singles, hits it to shortstop. And an easy field by face puts the second base, and that escapes the inning without any more damage being done. All tied up at 5-5 five five as you head to the bottom of the seventh. Michigan's going to have an opportunity to walk it off here in the bottom of the inning, or if not, we'll go to extra innings. Either way, we will be here. My name is Tim, this is Josh, and we'll be here for the entirety of today's game, bring you all the action, and especially now as we head to a very critical bottom of the seventh. Michigan will start right back with Kiki Thole, who, who started off last inning, started that rally off with that solo home run. And it will go Thole, Valamont, Conway. This was who we started with last inning when the Wolverines had that explosive start, scoring four runs in the bottom of the sixth. Hopefully, Thole can make some more magic happen. Yeah, no, it's, this is all, yeah, I mean, Thole had a home run in her last at bat. If she gets her second home run right here, that ends the game, a walk-off home run. Kiki Thole. He is just find some way to play to run here. Iowa's going to be trying all out. And, you know, it's all on Michigan at this point, who had a great sixth inning, scored four runs then, but just blew the, blew the game in the top seven. But a chance to get it all back and get the series sweep against the Hawkeyes. We, in the are, bottom of the we are now in the, the time of the game. We're now in that area where next it could be next run scores. It could Michigan obviously if they score right now, that's game. But if Iowa holds them, all Iowa needs is just one run in the top of the eighth, and that's all they need. And they could walk away with the win. So every at bat, every swing of the bat, every base runner is going to mean so much more. Yeah, Michigan coming into this weekend 57th in the softball RPI rankings. First pitch to Thull is fouled off. Big cut, takes it back behind the grandstand. Yeah, sweep here against a Big Ten opponent would, you know, further propel that forward and bring that up. Absolutely. Um, series win will also certainly help that, but a sweep would go even more. Every win matters at this point for the Wolverines. Second pitch on its way. Swinging fly ball left field. And it is... Foul. It was curving and hooking. I think it was saying it was foul. It kind of curved over. Because that ball. Bonnie Thole was so, not so So to sure. be clear, that ball did clear the fence. It cleared the left field fence. But the question right is, was it fair foul? foul. The warning, their coach, uh, Gillespie, is claiming that it curved around the foul pole and actually came back into fair territory. It was right down the line. And, and if this is ruled a home run, this will be one of the most interesting as about anti-climatic walk of home runs. Um, Thole has been just slowly walking the base path. The wind almost brought it back into fair territory, and now the umpires are meeting to see what they think. She's touched home, but the question Thole is, is what, are the, what do the umpires rule it? As the uh, umpires are conferring still, not sure whether or not this is something that can get video review, but an interesting so moment and situation is we could theoretically have a walk-off home run. It looked, Tim, you know, from our view, it looked like it was definitely going foul, but the wind yeah. brought it back into play. Are, our angle that we had made it look like a foul ball. However, so that's why I first didn't make uh, much of a, a fuss about it because it looked like it was just going to be foul and that was going to be the end of it. But all of a sudden... It's a windy day here. Coach Gillespie, who is, who is standing on the third base line, said no, 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 it curved back in. And now we'll see what they rule. What the official signal is going to be. It looks like they might be heading to the VAR. Or the, yeah, the, the review. 
They are going to review this one. This could be. This could be. I, I think it's likely a Josh, foul ball. When's the last time you saw a game end by a reviewed home run? I have no idea. Not, not. I can't recall anything. I think it was probably foul. I don't believe I've ever seen. So if this happens, because it's whenever it crosses the, it's whenever it leaves the park. So it has yeah. to leave the park. Can't hook back in at the end. I think it hooked back in a little too late. We'll see what the call is. But I do think it was probably. I think, it's what, I think it's what they're discussing. Is it? Is it when it leaves the? It's wall? when. It, it's when it leaves is the it park. It is it fair or foul? I think they're going to rule this a foul ball. But we will It'll have be to interesting see. to see when they, where exactly they make the determination. Like would this be, has left yeah. the park. This would be no nice if they play. like show their. I mean, it's just whenever it crosses the the yeah. line out, whenever it crosses the wall. I think it was probably foul. You know, certainly off the bat it looked that way, but kind of gave fact, it a chance. First, and now we we at wait first the it review. Didn't even look like it was gonna uh, cross um, cross the fence. That's why I initially thought it was just gonna be a deep um, foul out to closer man in the left field there, but. Yeah, it looked like it was. Going. Yeah, it just kept carrying and started hooking fair, but I think it probably was fair too late. Well, thank this would be some way for a walk-off home run. I think Michigan's preparing as if. Um, yeah. Well, I don't thank think you, thank you all for sticking with us here as we try to figure out exactly what has happened. There is, unfortunately, this is unlike football or basketball where they also have show the replay and the thing this is <laughs> Janissa Conway pleading to the gods asking Ready for, for it to be a run. home run begging it was certainly close I mean the, these umpires are taking a good long look at it yeah they have been in it for a minute now this would be some way for a game to end let's see if Conway's prayers are answered by the DJ. But again, of it, has to be, it, it has to be indisputable evidence theoretically to overturn this. Be some way to end the game. Yep. For those of you just tuning in now, uh, bottom of the seventh tied game. Um, Kiki Thole, first batter up, has a deep fly ball to left field that looks that looked foul from mine and Josh's perspective. But it started hooking back fair at the end. Apparently, and yeah, apparently it started hooking back questions, in. Was it fair uh, in time? Coach Gillespie went to the umps and was like, yo, All this right, is fair. All right, here's the decision. The first come out. And, and foul is the rule. Foul ball. I think that's the correct call. Unfortunately, the fans are not happy, but I do think it was the correct call. Janissa Conway is gonna need to go have a word with her deity of choice for not responding to that heartfelt prayer. Opposite. It was a foul ball, so no home run. This game will continue through the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, Reminding I think us where we are too late. is an 0-2 count. Yeah, so no all outs. of a sudden. So Kiki Toll will well, Kiki Thole, excuse me, will still have to take another shot at it here. The pitch in, outside ball. First ball of this at bat, one two count now. Kiki yeah, one Thole. two count now for Thol. The stakes are still the same. One run for the Wolverines, and that ends the game. The crowd making as much noise as they can. She Off lays down a pitch. bunt, and it looks like she's safe. Kiki got the got fed an off-speed pitch by Jalen Adams, but so already kind of started her swing and. It, was, it um, functionally it was a bunt, but it was more just like a very soft hit. And they're going to review this They're going to review here. this one as well. It was awfully close. It was hard to tell. I think she. it's going to be very close. She might have been just at or just yeah. safe. Well, incredible play there. Saw so the also was coming a second too late, kind of like half swung at it, started running. It was a very, again, the very, very, very bang, bang play. Um, it was a great job there by Jalen Adams to go and field that, make a good throw over to first. And this is our second review in three pitches. This would go down as a single in the books. And looks like they would pinch run for Thole if she is safe. So they're bringing out Riley Kerkarborough. Uh, No, oh, excuse me, that's not number four, that's number 14. Uh, Janelle Ilakwa would be the pinch runner, it looks like, 
if yeah, no, it's a Eric's close play. Say. We don't have a they are, they aren't they don't show the review up on the video screen, but come out and is and safe. safe. She is safe, and we will get that pinch run from number fourteen, Janelle Ilakwa. A little more speed. No disrespect to uh, Kiki Thole, but you know, watching her try to sprint out that bunt is clear why she does not intentionally bunt. Yeah, no, it was like a half swing and ended up just functioning as a bunt, hustled down to first. Now Michigan's going to put a pinch runner on with up. Thole safe at first. Back the pinch runner will be Lily Janelle Alakwa. Yep. Lily Valamont now coming up to the batter's box. Last time up singled. Got on base and was a part of that three run shot that eventually scored. Lays down a bunt but goes foul. foul. Valamont doesn't have a home run yet on the year. With no outs, I think bunt's probably the right move. If she can lay it down here, but this is the this is the pitch where she's got a, this next pitch. Because if you, if you foul out if, on a bunt with two strikes, that's it. So. It's really her last best shot at Trying to lay down a bun. If they're going to keep doing that, Alaco was on her horse. Moving to second, trying to advance the run over there. So uh, either, uh, again, well, that'll be ball number one. The as the pull yeah. back to the ball. Yeah, Valma was showing bun and pulled back there when she saw the pitch for ball number one. So the count's now even. Even Steven as the Wolverines are trying to find a way to get across the line here with the series sweep. 1-1 one, one count, no outs. Again, showing bunt, lays it down, and again goes foul. And as Rush mentioned, a foul, fouling out a bunt with two strikes as a result of strikeout. So yeah, so now she has to swing away here. We'll be given the swing away sign. Both bunts, if they stayed fair, would have been good, staying right there on the third base line, just dribbling down. Adams winds up, pitch in, off speed again. Foul ball there, got way ahead of that one. Did Valamont. Yeah, that, that pitch had a lot of movement on it. A one-two count here, still no outs. Valamont has to swing away and one for three on the day. Had, a, had that pitch single. in. One, two. And struck out looking. One out now. A yeah, that tough pitch, pitch seemed, there. Yeah, pitch him right down the center of the plate. So a clear missed opportunity there for the Wolverines. But still runner on first. And you have the, you have the pinch runner, Alakwa. And now... Janisa Conway, chance to have a huge moment here and potentially walk this off here. First pitch there, ball high. Conway last time up, had her single, got on base. Pitch in, thought about it's it, and hold back, strike. but came in for a strike anyways. One, one count now, one out. One runner on. <laughs> one runner on first with one strike and one ball with one out. With one three. Janessa Conway in the batter's box. Pitch comes in. Another off speed misses that one low. Janelle Adams has a wicked off speed pitch. Good lord. Off speed pitch. I have neither the proper view nor knowledge of softball to say exactly what it is. It's a curve, change up, or anything like, like that, but it is, change up. it is wicked when she throws it. And Slow then there, drop. drop pitch there. But it's 3-1. thought about it, but didn't end, up making the, didn't end up trying to make the steal there. And on deck for the Wolverines is Ella Stevenson. So unless there's a double play here, she will have the opportunity, no matter what happens with this at bat, to get up to bat. Obviously, double play would send us right in extra innings. Pitch in and low, and that's a walk. Great eye there from Janissa Conway, knowing that was important right now. Don't have to end the game in this moment, but just don't end up getting yourself into a bad double play, getting a bad out. And the so winning run is now in scoring position. Jalen Adams is now facing a sticky situation here 
With Ella Stevenson up and a chance to nab a walk-off. Stevenson was two for four in the first game yesterday. Stevenson reached on a fielder's choice last time before being driven in by that uh, Castellas homer. Pitch in. Let it go for a strike. 0 oh, 1 count. Ella Stevenson does have a sole home run to her name, as well as 19 RBIs, 8 doubles. We got a slugging of 339 as she sees that second strike go in there. Already down an 0 2 count. Tied game in the bottom of the seventh. 0 2 count, one out with runners on first and second. The walk-off run, the game-winning run, is right there on second base. A good hit to right field could end the game. And as a ground ball to third. She's safe. She's safe. Avery Jackson came up to the field. That ground ball tried to tag out Olaco, but Olaco managed to weave around. Stayed in the base path, but avoided the tag and got to third. And now the bases are loaded with the winning run. Winning run. On third. One base away. As Great Lockwood job there to evade the tag, and that's why you have those pinch runners. Alakwa there, able to evade that tag. Stay in the base path, and now base is juice with one out. This is Michigan's chance. That was incredible heads up base run there by Alakwa. To see the ball was hit right in front of her, to know that just the tag wasn't going to work. And honestly, for Avery Jackson, that was the right way to go for the tag. The way you were like out of position, the fact that Lockwood had a pole has seen you were going from start, it was a, it was going to be a lot easier to try to lay the tag than when we try to beat her back to the base. But unfortunately, Alakwa just had that extra second of preparedness and was just that much more ready. I was able to just slickly sidestep to the side and get in safe to third base. And now, up at bat 25, Ella Stevenson. Or it's no, uh, no, Costales. Me, that was Stevenson. This is Costales yeah, up Ava now. Costales, so a chance. She had that go-ahead three-run home run in the bottom of the six, and now a chance for a walk-off. So an unbelievable day for her, potentially, if she can find a way to get this walk-off. Fouled out in the second, walked in the fourth, and then homered last inning. And now it's one out, and the base is loaded. This could be, this could go down as the Ava Castales game. Absolutely. Jayla. One out, the fans are ready to jump to their feet for a potential walk off here. Jalen Adams, ready to send the pitch off. Cox back, rears, throws, off speed, misses inside, ball one. And remember, a walk would end the game as well with the bases loaded. The winning run at third, it will be somewhat anticlimactic, but Michigan would Everyone's not care in the slightest. Everyone's favorite way to win, the walk-off walk. Wind up, pitch, 0-1. Again, another off-speed, that again low. The pressure is mounting for Adams. She's got to find the strike zone. Lindsay has force Costales to swing. Lindsay I'm Costales here, I do not swing whatsoever. Force Adams to throw a strike. Lindsay had almost picked that one up off the dirt. But yeah, absolutely right. Make sure she shows, throws the strike first. And that pitch goes for a strike. Castales went for the half swing, pulled back. Thin Merritt was a strike anyways. Lockwell on third, Conway on second, Stephenson on first. Yeah. But in the box, Castales takes the pitch, swings up into left field, and drops. And that is going to be the game. A walk off single to left by Ava Castales. He also blew the game open with a three-run shot earlier today. And that is going to do it. Three games in two days and three comeback victories for the Wolverines over the Hawkeyes. That will be the final six to five. What a win for Michigan. Michigan a great Strange game that went from a pitcher's duel to a helter-skelter finish with some hitting, some makes of bad pitching. The game really had everything, but ended with and Ava Castales walk off single into shallow left center. And that'll be the game, and that'll be the series. Michigan gets her third Big Ten sweep. It moves to 10-3 and three in Big Ten play. An overall great game from the Wolverines. You're right, this game did have a couple different modes to it in the first three innings. You saw uh, Lauren Dirk 
Lauren Drakowski uh, absolutely bottle up uh, the Iowa batting lineup, putting each of the first nine batters down as they came up. And Michigan, of course, got to an early start as opposed to the previous games, got the early start with that first run in the first inning. Uh, but the next couple of innings, not much happened. Now the team could really get much of a foothold until that fourth inning where a few key hits um, and a sacrifice bunt by the Hawkeyes ended up with bases loaded with one out, which they were able to get a run out of there. As the game continued to go on, Michigan still struggled to find some hitting, allowing Iowa to take a 3-1 lead after a full count with two outs, turned into a hit batter, a second hit batter to load the bases. Two runs would end up scoring. Iowa having that lead, looking like they're going to maintain it until the bottom of the sixth inning where uh, Kiki Thole, first batter up, homered to right center field to bring it to 3-2. to Then later in that inning, Ava Costales stepped up and hit a drive to left field, a three-run shot that gave Michigan a two-run uh, two lead heading into the seventh inning. Uh, but of course, when we hit the seventh inning, Jenna Young hit her fourth home run of the year, a two-run shot to right fit center, uh, scoring herself and Avery Jackson. That tied the game up at five, pushing us into the seventh inning, where after the bases got loaded, after we thought a full home run might have ended the game, uh, a single by Casales who hit that shot was able to wrap everything up and Michigan comes away with their win. Uh, the win will go to Hannah George, her second of the year, and the loss will go to Jalen Adams, bringing her to 9-9 nine and nine on the season. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in today on WCBN Sports uh, YouTube uh, for this uh, softball game. It was a very exciting game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I have been Tim. Good call today. Joshua Brown signing off. Signing off. For a Michigan series sweep over Iowa. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Uh, tune into the baseball game if you guys are still around. Uh, and as always, go blue.